I'm going to show you 50 different ways to get credit lines and loans for your business. So if you're looking to get money to grow, you are in the right place. Hey, it's Ty Crandall with Credit Suite. And today I'm going to show you 50 different ways you can get money to grow your business. I'm going to talk about credit lines and loans you can get. Even if you have credit issues, we're going to talk about options that will work. Even if you're just starting your business, we're going to talk about options that will work. Even if you've applied and been denied again and again and again, I'm going to show you funding options that you can get approved for today. If you are a well-established business and you're looking to get millions of dollars at really, really good terms, we're going to talk about those funding options as well. Look, I think it's near impossible for you to walk out of today's training without having access to multiple different ways to get money for your business. So by the end of this training, you're going to understand fundability. You're going to understand what lenders and credit issues are looking at that's causing most of your application attempts to get denied. You're going to know how to fix that stuff so you can actually turn it around and get it approved. We're going to talk about business credit building and what you need to do to get credit for your EIN that's not linked to your personal social. We're going to talk about like six or eight different kinds of credit you can get without a personal guarantee and credit check. And we're going to dive into 50, actually 50 plus. Those that know me, I know I have a tendency to uh, under promise and over deliver. So we're actually going to talk about more than 50 different unique ways to get money for your business. We've got a lot to cover. So let's dive in. So let's tell you a little bit about who we are so you know the expertise that we have. If you have not joined us before, we've helped over 42,000 people so far obtain credit financing. So nothing I'm going to teach you today is about concept. It's all the stuff that's actually working right now, the funding that's available right now, the other business owners just like you are actually getting. We rank most of the best entrepreneurial company uh, by Entrepreneur Magazine 2018, Inc. 5000, 2019-20, hundreds of online reviews, A-plus rated with the BBB, and you'll find video testimonials, actual case studies, results of everything we do on our website. I only tell you this just so you know that we have the credibility. They actually have the credibility to talk to you today. Okay, now let's talk about the, the obvious uh, elephant in the room, right? Most people try to get money for their business and they fail to do so. Okay, a lot of people are trying to go to the bank and, and that's kind of old school. There's a lot of, most 90% of current lending takes place through alternative lenders or fintech lenders. And we're going to dive in and I'm going to help you overcome that obstacle today. A lot of people don't realize that there's funding options that work for them if, they're high risk industry, or if they have credit issues, or if you're just starting. And we're going to talk about those options today as well. A lot of people don't know where to go to get the money or what kind of programs you can even qualify for. We're going to talk about those things today. And a lot of people don't know because they don't access the newest credit lines, the newest loans that hit the market to be able to know what options are currently working now. We're going to talk about that today as well. And a lot of business owners just don't know when the economy changes and banks kind of tighten up like they had through COVID. Where to go to get money? Who's still issuing credit cards? Who's still issuing loans? Who's still issuing uh, credit cards? You know, and we're going to talk about all those things today as well. Now, if you are sticking around to the end of this training, it's going to be a long training. We're going to be here for over three hours. So uh, you're going to get several cool things that are worth, I don't know, uh, priceless. We'll say priceless. 30 days of free business credit monitoring with Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax Experience. I'm going to show you throughout this training how to get that. You can get a no-cost business credit funding consultation with our team. They'll go through, figure out what, what your fund, what's wrong with fundability, what to fix. I'll qualify you for all the financing you can get now and give you tips and tactics to build your business credit. I'm going to teach you throughout uh, exactly how to access those bonuses. So are you in the right place? Well, if you're looking to get business funding, uh, but your circumstances might have prevented you from getting funding from other sources, we're going to talk about that. You're definitely in the right place. And it could be because you're a startup. It could be because you're a high-risk industry. It could be because... Uh, the business has taken a dip, a dip cash flow wise because of COVID. It could be your personal credit scores are an issue or that you don't have collateral or maybe you're on the opposite. end. Maybe you're a well-established business that's failed to get the millions or hundreds of thousands that you want in credit lines or loans at really good terms. Uh, and we're going to talk about all those things today as well. Uh, if you've been turned down for financing, you're on the right place. We're going to talk about those types of things as well. If you don't like the terms that you'd be getting approved for and you are getting approved, you just don't like the terms, the loan terms are too short. They almost look like uh, payday advance type loans and you want better financing. We're going to talk about that as well. And maybe you just don't have the time. <laughs> maybe you don't have the time to go through and spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours learning about lending programs and lenders and you just need to condense. Well, you're in the right place there as well. And most importantly, if you're looking to get the most money to grow the business and you want it at the absolute best terms, I'm going to show you exactly how to get that today. So what are we going to cover? Well, over 50, fantastic. That is not my word. That is Janet on my content team's word. 
uh, credit lines that you can get right now. Okay, maybe you can qualify for not all of them, but you're gonna qualify for some. Uh, the terms and details of those programs, how to qualify to actually get this funding, how to address the issues that are preventing you from getting denied. Look, a lot of people think it's their credit. They think it's their revenue. It's preventing them from getting denied. That's not the case. The reality is there's really, really, really basic stuff that gets 60% of loan applications denied. Six, zero. So more than half of all loan applications are denied because the simple stuff you can easily fix. I'm going to start off the training by teaching you to fix that stuff. So we can turn a lot of these denials into approvals. And I can tell you case study after case study after case study of clients that got denied for funding and then fixed one of these things we're going to cover. Then they turned around and got like no limit credit cards and $50,000 plus loans. So I'm going to teach you that formula and how to fix what's wrong so you can actually get approved and improve your chances of getting money. Even if you're a startup, even if you have credit issues, even if you are a well-established business looking for millions of dollars. Now, I'm going to kind of come in here. And I am going to, let me see, join audio. Okay, audio, all right. I have no sound. Okay, join with computer audio. All right, so everybody on the webinar was complaining you have no sound. You now have sound. So thanks for tuning in. You saw the slides. You just saw a lot of what we're going to cover today. My apology for not clicking on sound. I've got a lot of people on social that will be tuning in. Probably over 1,000, 1,500 people we'll have here today and my webinar. But you all should be good on sound on the webinar now. Yes, I can hear now. Okay, my apology for ignoring all of your requests. But now we have covered what we're going to dive into today. Let's get to the actual meat of this presentation. Hello, and I'm going to, a lot of people are saying hello, but I, I can't, I'm not even have time to say hello to everybody. So I will stick around to the end and answer questions. And I'll keep an eye on some of the chat to try to answer some questions along the way as well. So let's dive in. Fundability, okay? This is the ability for your business to even get money. Okay, and we have to start here because before I start telling you all the ways to get money, you have to understand that more than half of people get denied because of this stuff. It's basic stuff. The lenders and credit issuers look at that you don't meet. And a little tweak here or there, this is going to make it easier for you to be able to get a lot of the money that we're going to talk about today. So it's essential to cover these points because these factors determine whether you get approved or whether you get denied. So this is a look at what we call our fundability matrix. And the fundability matrix has 125 points that we have found are the difference maker on whether you get approved or denied for credit or financing. That's what it comes down to. Okay, so if you meet this criteria, this is when you get automated approvals. This is when you get maximum funding, when you get the best terms. But if you don't meet the criteria, that's when you get denied. And not meeting some of this basic criteria, that's, it's probably the reason a lot of you have already been denied before. And here's one of my case studies I want to show you an example. So these are the samples. We went to our bank to get a business line of credit. They turned us down. We got started with Credit Suite, set up our business credibly, and built our business credit. After following the steps, we've now secured over 96,000 of business credit cards, just applied for the Platinum Amex and got approved with no limit. We have four to five lender companies call us every day trying to give us money. That's a really good problem to have. We're excited. If you don't have business credit yet, you should get involved with credit suite to have the same results we do. There's a reason I show you this, this testimonial. Because they had actually got denied, as I mentioned here. And what took them from a denial to a no-limit Amex card was one thing. The address on their Secretary of State records didn't match what they were putting on the application. A lot of people, that happens. Because what happens is we set up a business. We then set up our Secretary of State, and then we change the address. We never change the Secretary of State. We don't even think about it. That's one of the basic checks that lenders use. And in this case, it went from a denial to a $96,000 approval and a no-limit Amex because of fixing one fundability point. That's how important fundability is. So let's talk about your business name. First of all, try to choose a name that does not indicate you are in a high-risk industry. We are a perfect example of what not to do. Credit Suite, having the word credit in your name, indicates we're in a high-risk industry. It makes it very hard for us to get bank accounts, merchant accounts, loans, and credit lines, and credit cards. We do it. Why did we do it? Because we chose to have a name that indicates what we do, knowing that we would face greater risks of not being able to get financing. And we're pretty good at being able to figure out how to get financing, so we weren't worried about that obstacle. So, for example, if you are Chico's Bail Bonds, and Bail Bonds is a high-risk industry, well, then consider just changing your name to Chico's or considering setting up the business under the name Chico's. Having a, an indicator in your name that you're high risk throws up a red flag when you apply for credit financing. It's something to be able to consider. Okay, And if you do change a business name, you need to make sure it's changed everywhere. Congruency is a very important theme about fundability that I'll teach you here as we continue on. This means if you're going to change anything, your business name, your address, your phone number, you need to change your corporation documents. You need to change any licensing you have, any record you have with reporting agencies, with the IRS, with your bank, anything needs to be changed. So everything that you have needs to have the same congruent information. Now, it's best to copy and paste this information so you don't make mistakes. But the most important thing is 
you need to make sure that that business name is set up where it's the same everywhere and try to avoid high risk indicators in that name. Any, any ICS codes, I can't begin to tell you the importance of this. And it's one of the biggest things that I see people screw up. And here's why. Because a lot of people don't realize what their NAI ICS code is. And any ICS code is a code issued by the IRS. It used to be an SIC code. Now they expanded it into more categories and it's an NAI ICS code. So the NAI ICS code is very important because this is used by the IRS to categorize your business to see if like the expenses you claim on your taxes are like equal to or similar to what other industry, people in your industry are claiming. That's what it's used for. But lenders and credit issuers use it for a different purpose. The business credit reporting agencies, lenders and credit issuers use this to determine if you're high risk or low risk. And the problem is, if you just think about it, if you go to a lender and say, I'm in software, but you don't indicate which of all these subcategories you're in, they will default to put you in a high risk category because they would rather have you at a high risk than low risk. They can charge you more interest and they protect their interest that way. So if you're not very specific and tell them exactly what your NAICS really is, then the problem there is they're going to guess, they're going to guess high risk, then they all pass information to each other, right? All the lenders use something called small business financial exchange to share your information. Okay, the credit bureaus get your information, they share it, lenders and credit issuers, everybody's sharing your info. So the minute one person gets the wrong NAICS code, everybody has it, and then it's a nightmare to fix. So you've got to make sure that you come in and you find the right NAICS code, and you want to try to find an NAICS code that, that describes your business but that does not indicate that you are in a high risk industry. If you don't do this, not only will you get denied, but man, all kinds of things get messed up. The IRS is looking at your expenses to relating you to other businesses and other industries that you're not even in. The credit bureaus are looking at your risk, engaging your risk to other people in your industry, and you're not even in that industry. Lenders and credit issuers are holding it against you that you're in a high risk industry, and you're not even in a high risk industry. So many problems will happen in the lifetime of your business if you don't understand what your NAICS code is. So what do you do? Go to NAICSCode.com, search forward slash search. You can do it right now during this training. Find your NAICS code. You'll see in real estate, there's like 25 different subcategories of real estate. So find out exactly what your code is, the number and the code. Whenever you fill out an application for credit or financing, put the number, put the actual exact definition per NAICS.com that you actually find. And Go back, pull your business credit reports, update it with the business credit reporting agencies, update it with the IRS. And any way you ever see it presented wrong, then you go back and have them correct it. And if they say, well, we got the information from a third party, supply your business credit reports, supply your actual IRS tax returns and show that everybody else got it right and they will change that. Very important. I see a lot of people denied for this reason. You also need to set up the right entity. Okay, You don't want to be a sole proprietor. Sole proprietors, I'm not an accountant. This is not accounting advice. Okay. But I, a sole proprietor gets audited one in seven times. A corporation gets audited one in 50 times. It's ludicrous to be a sole prop, prop proprietor, not only just for tax and avoidance of getting audited, but because lenders and credit insurers don't take you seriously. In order to be taken seriously, you need to have an entity set up that's preferably a corporation or an LLC. You can even choose a partnership, but you really need to stay away from sole proprietorship. It just doesn't make you look credible. You also need to set up your EIN. Now, a lot of you on here are thinking, hey, I, you might be sitting there thinking, I, I didn't even know you could have a business without an EIN. You can. You can absolutely have a business without an EIN, but you can't build business credit without having an EIN. And I assure you that lenders or credit issuers look at this as an absolute basic requirement that you need to have to look credible. If you don't even have an EIN, they are not going to take you seriously. So the minute you set up the entity, you need to go to irs.gov. It's the only real free place to get the EIN. And go and get your EIN at absolutely no cost. You also need to make sure you have your business address set up the right way. PO boxes and UPS addresses are the enemy. So many lenders and credit issuers will deny you if you use those. Now, more of them are welcoming of home addresses, but there's still a lot of credit issuers that will deny you if you use a home address. Walmart's one of those. Walmart credit card, they don't really want to issue to you. If you are not coming in and you're not actually using a home address if you, or an address other than a home, if you use a home address, well, then you're probably going to get denied from a lot of places, including Walmart. Here's what's even worse. Dun & Bradstreet has now been messing around with this idea of putting Google Street Views of your business address on your actual credit report. So if you don't want a lender to pull up a commercial credit report and see a picture of your house, then you need to avoid using home addresses. So what are some alternatives? Well, some alternatives 
is that you can come in and get a real retail location or get a virtual address. Da Vinci, Regis, Alliance, they all sell these virtual addresses that make it look like you're in a high-rise building in Tampa, Florida, but the reality is you're just getting your mail there. So that's a great alternative to make sure yourself look really credible with lenders and credit issuers. Another comes down to your phone number. First of all, get a business phone number, even if it's a voice over IP. Avoid Google Voice. I have no idea why, but a lot of credit card issuers do not like Google Voice and deny you when you're using it. Don't know why. We just see it all the time with tens of thousands of clients. But you can get a voice over IP number. What you can't do is do not use a mobile phone. Do not use a home phone number on an application as your business phone number. It will get you denied. Okay, we use the same software and technology that lenders use. When you enter an address in our system, when you enter a phone number in our system, it immediately says, whether it's a residential address, PO box, or physical business address, it immediately says, whether it's a cell phone, home phone, or business phone, or voice over IP, it says. Lenders and credit insurance computers know instantaneously based on that. And think about this. If you're trying to get a loan for 100 grand and then their computers pick up that you're working from home and that you actually have a, a cell phone as your business phone number, that your information isn't congruent online, that your name indicates you're high risk, what do you really think the likelihood of getting money from them is? Even if you do meet the income requirements and you do meet the credit requirements, all these other red flags work against you to get you denied. You need to have the phone number be toll free. Look, nowadays, anybody that's credible has pretty much a toll free number, unless you're a local business like a florist that's only doing business locally. And even then, a florist is, she'll have a toll free number. I said, flowers to my mom, right? I order them up in Indiana where she is. Okay. Well, then all of a sudden, I don't want to call a local phone number. I want to call a toll free number. So you also need to make sure the phone number is listed with 411. This is one of the secret requirements that a lot of lenders and credit issuers have. Because what happens is to pick up, be picked up by 411, it has to happen organically, meaning they have to find you on Google and Yellow Pages. And that just happens progressively as your business grows. So lenders and credit issuers know they can look at a simple test of 411 listing to see if you're actually credible. You can't even go to 411 and list yourself. Now, there is a company called listyourself.net that will allow you to shortcut that process. So get that phone number listed with 411 with the basic requirements that lenders and credit issuers have to determine if you're fundable or you are not. If you have any necessary business licenses, get it. If your county, if your industry, if your state requires a business license, get the business license. If you're not required to get a business license, but you can get one, get one. There are some business credit sources like Granger that will issue a credit line of $2,500 just because you have a license for your business. The reason I give that example is it goes a long way to show you how credible you look when you have a business license. When you can present a license to a lender or credit issuer showing that you are an occupational license in, in Pasco County, Florida, where I am, or a license for your industry, it goes a long way to showing you're legit. And that business license carries a lot of weight with lenders and credit issuers. So if you can get one, get one. It's going to help you tremendously. Okay. You also, along that line, need to make sure that your website and your email address is set up the right way. You need to have a business website. People still ask me that. I'm oblivious to why. You need a business address. It's stupid cheap to do. Go to Upwork.com or Fiverr.com. Hire somebody for very little money to put up a website. Go to like TemplateMonster.com or any of these places that sell pretty good looking templates. Have the person put together the template. You give them the content. They put up the website. It costs you less than 200 bucks to do it. I'm not saying it's the best way to do it. Okay, a lot of us have bigger businesses, spend five, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars building websites, but you don't need to do that when you start. You can start for less than 200 bucks, have a real credible website that reflects the products and services that you sell. That will be looked at by lenders and credit insurers. They're crawlers that they're looking at to determine how fundable your business is. And have a professional business email address. Mine is info at creditsuite.com. Okay, our website's creditsuite.com. The two are the same. You don't want to have email or AOL. You don't want to have Gmail. You don't want to have dude 2021 at gmail.com. You don't want to have that stuff. It doesn't make you look legit. I can't tell you how much money has been cost for people that I won't do business with because they have a Gmail address. They don't look legit. I, lose, I don't feel comfortable working with a business owner that's using a Gmail address. Lenders and credit issuers don't feel comfortable lending to people that don't even have a professional email address. So make sure you get your professional email address set up as well. It's very important to your fundability. Okay. Now, if you don't have the stuff or if you want a fundability assessment, well, give us a call. 
During this stream, I will be coming on and showing our website, our phone number at the bottom of my slides, and creditsuite.com forward slash console. You can schedule a consultation with us. You can call us. And on that consultation, we'll do a fundability assessment to see what's wrong with your fundability. We'll check the places lenders and credit issuers check to see what's wrong and then give you advice about what to change. One final point before I wrap up the fundability part and get to the funding part is you need to make sure all of your information is congruent. I told you before that over 60% of loan applications are denied because of fundability reasons. Here's why. Think about the amount of fraud that lenders are inundated with. The reality is more applications are fraudulent that go to a lender than are actually legit. So all they're trying to do is figure out what's real and what's not real. If you apply for a loan or a credit card or a credit line, and they go to look online and they see that your website or your yellow pages or your secretary of state has your name different, your address different, your phone number different, they don't even think it's the same company. One of the biggest, one of the most crazy things I've heard is lenders telling me that the main reason they deny applications is that when they go to search the business, they can't find the business. Meaning the business name that's supplied on the application isn't exactly with Secretary of State. Since the lender can't match the two together, they automatically deny the application because they think the application is fraud. Imagine supplying a six inch thick file for an SBA loan and getting denied because they do a Secretary of State search first and they can't find your business and deny it before they even look at the second page of the application. That's what you want to avoid. Congruency of all of your records is very important to help making that happen. Now I'm gonna introduce you to the three C's capital acquisition formula, which will teach you how you can get money and what kind of money you can get. But let me do a real quick search here, okay? Um, just to see comments, questions. A lot of people are coming in, but keep in mind, as if I have, I mean, I will have thousands of comments and questions, so I can't address everything today. I'm gonna to do a little scan here once in a while to see if anybody has anything. And I will stick around to the end to make sure that all of your questions are answered. By the way, if you're getting value, do me a favor. Hit the like button, hit the love button, hit the share button. It's the only thing I will really ask you to do during this training. If you're getting value, hit the like, hit the love, hit the share, and go ahead and subscribe on the channel that you're on because you're getting a taste of the kind of training we provide. Okay, so let's talk about how to get money. First of all, let me make this as simple as it possibly can be on who can get money and who can't get money and how to get money and where you can get it. Okay, if you want to think like a lender, you have to understand what they're looking for. I call this the three C's. There's kind of four C's. I'll tell you the fourth one in a second. Cash flow, collateral, and credit. So it used to be that we all got loans from banks and banks offer SBA loans. And they require we have good credit and we have all this collateral and we have cash flow verifiable protection trips. That's what it used to be. Then all of a sudden, 2008 happened. Dodd-Frank came in, made it harder for lenders to issue money. All these fintech and alternative lenders started pouring in the space. What fintech and alternative lenders realized that big banks didn't is that you can lend money uh, and get a good rate of return. And most people pay through if you don't focus on all three of these, but you only focus on one. So as we go through this today, I'm going to have a little indicator on each slide that's going to tell you which one of these three lenders and credit issuers are actually looking for. It's like a shortcut. It's like a cheat sheet I created for you guys. So what I mean by that is that a lot of lenders will lend you money just because you have consistent cash flow. They don't care about your credit. They don't care about your collateral. A lot of lenders will lend you money because you have some kind of asset that can serve as collateral. They don't care about your cash flow. They don't care about your credit. You, you could even get it as a startup. A lot of funding sources will give you money based on credit only. They don't care about your collateral. They don't care about your cash flow. You can get it as a startup. Now, the fourth C is cosigner because you can also use somebody else's credit to qualify for funding. You can also use somebody else's collateral to qualify for funding. And don't worry. If you don't have any cash flow, any credit, or any collateral, I'm going to show you funding that will still work for you today. But again, to get most access to most kind of capital, you need one of the three. The more of the three you have, the more capital becomes available to you. If you have all three, then you're an SBA level, okay? But if you don't have all three, that's okay. Even one will open up sometimes tens, if not many, many more types of funding options for you. And again, if you have none of the three, don't worry. We're going to talk about options. So I'll show you as we dive into funding how to recognize which one of these C's, cash flow, credit, or collateral the lender, the lender is primarily looking at, that will give you an idea of whether you can qualify. So do you have consistent cash flow for your business? Have you been open six months or more? And they can look at your bank statements and see money going through those bank statements. That's cash flow. Do you have collateral? Do you have some kind of asset? I'm going to show you a bunch of them that can work today. Do you have good personal credit or a guarantor that does? Keep in mind, 75% of business owners get money from family and friends 
So there's a lot of family, friends, and investors who would graciously let you use their credit to get a credit line, especially if they could have some kind of ownership interest in your business or some kind of return on their investment. So some things to consider. So let's dive in and talk about number 50. Now this is credit line hybrid. And I don't know actually if my slides do have, oh, yep, here we go. Okay, I do have that. I was like, where's that indicator I was gonna show you? So credit line hybrid is still one of my top three favorite funding options and I wanna start with it here. So credit line hybrid is where it's a hybrid of a credit line and a credit card. The best parts about credit lines is that you can get cash out at very low rates. The best benefit of credit cards is that you can actually get 0% interest. This combines both. It's the only program that combines both where you get 0% APR for up to 18 months and you can take the cash out. Very popular for real estate investors. They can get 100 grand, 150 grand, pull the cash out, use it to buy properties as an example. So 0% rates for six to 18 months. A lot of the accounts report to the business credit reporting agency. So you're building business credit at exactly the same time. You can usually get an, a, an amount approved five to eight times the amount of whatever your highest credit card limit account is right now, okay? All you need to get approved is a 680 FICO score or higher. You need to have some open credit cards now. They prefer you have two accounts open, um, two accounts open for two years or more. If you have less than that and have a house or have a, a car loan on your credit report, that can offset that. You could use your credit. You could use a guarantor. 50% of our clients, we do a lot of funding on this. I don't even know. It was a lot last year. I don't know. It, well over $10 million. I'm not sure how far over $10 million it was. But we did in this program, and half of our clients that got this never even used their credit. They used a guarantor's credit to qualify. So 0% rates for 18 months, up to $150,000 approval, five to eight credit lines you get. They report, a lot of them report to the business credit reporting agencies. They help you build business credit, and it's based on credit. You can see here, this little, to qualify, you will need good personal credit. So you're going to see that I'm going to have one of these on every one of these funding programs. So you're going to know what's needed or nothing is needed to actually be able to qualify and to be able to get approved. Okay. So that being said, let me look here. No other comments, questions here. Good afternoon. Jumped on a little late. Don't worry. We've got, you're going to be here for a long time. All right. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Okay. Don't forget if you want to see if you qualify for credit line hybrid or any or all of these funding programs, give us a call. Our numbers on the bottom are a lot of our slides, 877-600-2487 creditsuite.com forward slash console. You can jump on a call during this training. You can actually go to our creditsuite.com forward slash console to schedule, and we will do a funding assessment to see any and all of these options, what you actually may qualify for. So number 49 on our list of 50 is equipment financing. Now this is available for startups and it's basically for the purpose of buying equipment. Now you might need equipment now, you might need it later, but it's something to think about no matter how small or big you may be. One of my friends came to me and said, I need to get a line of credit. I said, what for? She said, because I'm starting a new business and I want to actually purchase this big piece of equipment I need. So she was in the medical practice field. She's a doctor. So we got her a credit line, but I said, I'm not going to let you use this to buy equipment. I'm going to get you equipment financing for that need. Then we use your credit line to pay your first and last month's payment down for the equipment financing. And in the end, she got financing to the equipment at a really low rate, great terms. She got a credit line like she wanted, but she didn't have to use the credit line to buy the equipment. She still had all the credit line available and she used it to actually cover the first and last month's payment down fee equipment. That's a smart way to use capital. So equipment financing works for startups, works if you have 580 type credit scores, so bad credit, you can still be able to get approved for equipment financing. And it basically gives you the money that you need to be able to actually qualify, to be able to actually go in and buy a piece of equipment, a backhoe, a big computer, a big printer, something that you need for a factory, something you even need in an office. Okay, I've got Friends of mine that own credit repair companies that do $10 million a year in sales, and they have thousands of dollars in single pieces of equipment that sort letters, that put stamps on letters, that seal the letters. It's insane what these guys do. So no matter how big or small it is, I mean, like that's credit repair, for example, and they can use equipment financing to get the equipment they need. So I'll give you an example, because a lot of you might now, or you might in the future need equipment financing. And it works for you. It's fairly easy to get approved 24, 48 hours. You can get it with bad credit. And again, you can get it as a startup. The term is very wildly depending on your actual risk. Now, equipment leasing is similar to equipment financing, but it's better terms. The problem with equipment leasing is you can't get it unless you've actually been in business one year or more. So you need to be in business one year or more to get equipment leasing. And your credit requirements are a little bit better. You can finance equipment with bad credit. You can't lease equipment with bad credit. But even above average credit, you can still qualify for equipment leasing. So keep this in mind, whether you need equipment now 
or, or even you don't think you do, but you will need it in the future. Because again, a lot of people get into industries like credit repair and never even think about needing equipment financing. But as their business grows, they realize it's exactly what they need. That's why I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Now, equipment sale leaseback, this is interesting because what happens with equipment leasing and financing, you're going to get money to get equipment, new equipment, right? Or used equipment. Back. But equipment sale leaseback, you're using equipment you may already own or somebody around you may own and borrowing against that equipment to be able to get money. Now, you can't owe anything on the equipment because you can't use it as collateral if it's already used as collateral for another loan. But, and it doesn't even have to be your equipment. So I could go to my grandpa and say, hey, uh, grandpa, like you have that backhoe in your backyard that you never use and I'm starting a business and I need money. Can I use your backhoe to borrow against to get money to get my business off the ground? So again, this is where you want, this is called reticular activating system, RAS. And the reticular activating system is this, you know, if you want to buy a, a Tesla, all of a sudden you start seeing Teslas everywhere you go. The RAS is what makes something present in your mind, okay? So what I'm telling you this is that now you never thought about this option before. Now all of a sudden you can start paying attention to the people around you and your own world to see if there's equipment available to you that you could actually use for this purpose. Remember, it doesn't need to be your equipment and you don't need to have good credit for this at all. All you need is collateral. And the collateral is the piece of equipment that's actually being used, okay? And uh, MSP says, what will we be able to come back and watch this later? You will. On Facebook, you'll be able to get the playback, which is where you're actually tuning in. And if you're on YouTube, you'll be able to do the exact same thing. Okay, so again, if you want help to see which of this funding you can qualify, give us a call, 877-600-2487, schedule creditsuite.com forward slash console. We will do a free assessment to see all the funding that you're able to get. Now, so let's talk about funding anybody can get. This is actually starter vendors. Now, vendor credit is really a broad term. Vendor really is anybody that sells stuff and that will give you credit to buy their stuff. Staples is a vendor. Walmart's a vendor. Amazon's a vendor. But what I'm talking about today are starter vendors. These are vendors that will give you credit. Even if you have none, they'll give you credit lines. They don't look at your personal credit. There's no personal guarantee required. And they report this credit to the business credit reporting agencies. Here's some examples. Crown Office Supplies. Here's an approval for 3158 That makes no sense. But anyway, somebody got approved for $3,158 in crowd. Okay, here's another $2,000 approval with SUMA that somebody got as a vendor as well. Okay, so this just gives you an example of what vendors are and how they can work. Crown Office Supplies sells all kinds of office supplies. This person got approved with no personal credit check and no personal guarantee for over $3,000 at Crown Office Supplies. If you're getting a business off the ground or trying to grow a business, it's way easier to use an account like this that gives you 30 days to pay back, back the money than trying to use your current credit card's money out of your pocket to buy it. The same here with Suma Office Supplies. This person got a $2,000 credit line. That means now, instead of them going out of pocket to buy all their office supplies, they could use the Suma or they could use the Crown Office Supplies accounts to be able to get approved. And remember, these work for starter businesses. There's nothing required. You see my, my, my little uh, graphic to qualify. Nothing is needed. You don't need collateral. You don't need cash flow. You don't need credit. This is funding that anybody can get. So they're going to give you terms typically on net 30. Okay, some of them like Crown will charge a $99 fee, not a lot do, but the benefit of Crown is they report to Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. It's a really good account to build business credit, even though their customer service isn't the best. Crown, if you're watching this, don't hate me. It's just that's complaints we get all the time. You got to improve that stuff. Okay, but a lot of these accounts, most of them will not charge you any kind of startup fee. Crown does because they're used for business credit building, and they should because, honestly, they report to all three reporting agencies. It really helps. You don't need collateral. You don't need cash flow. You don't need personal credit to be able to get approved. Now, a lot of reasons that business credit building like this is awesome because, first of all, keep in mind that reporting agencies like Experian and Equifax will give you a failing score even if you have no credit. And here's an example of that. Somebody that has zero on the credit report is seen as very high risk, and yet they have no credit reporting. Look. There's no credit on the credit report, but they're still given a failing score. Remember, my goal today is to help you get money. And it's not going to work if I just show you a bunch of ways to get money. You have to understand what prevents you from getting approved and know what to fix to give yourself the best chance of getting approved. This is what gets a lot of people denied. They don't have any business credit established. The lender or credit issuer goes to pull the business credit report, and then they see a failing score and high risk like this. By the way, the current financial stability score you see on my slide is literally indicates your risk of filing bankruptcy in the next 12 months. 
Imagine having a score that puts you about as high a risk you can get of filing bankruptcy when you've never even done anything wrong. You don't even have any credit on your credit report. That's what the reporting agencies will do. It's why you need to use these vendors. If you use vendors like Uline, like Granger, like Quill, like Crown Office Supplies, like Suma, like Strategic Network Solutions, then these vendors, even one account like that reporting on your business credit report like you see here, will take you to a very high score. That's about a high, about a highest score you can get. That's about a lower risk as you can get. Here's somebody that went from a failing score to a really good score because they added one of these vendors on the business credit report. So we have two benefits here, okay? The first benefit is that you get access to thousands of dollars in credit you can use to buy stuff to fund your business with no personal guarantee, no credit check, no collateral requirements, no cash flow requirements, no credit requirements. Anybody can get it if you have a business entity set up and you follow my fundability steps to set up the business the right way. The second benefit is you're building business credit, which instantaneously makes you more lendable for all the other kind of loans, credit lines, and credit cards that you're probably going to want to get. So let's talk about retail credit. Now, retail credit comes from major retailers. And this, again, is available without a personal guarantee and credit check. You name a retailer and they offer it. Nordstrom even offers it. Sam's Club, Costco, BP, or uh, uh, Sam's Club, Costco, Walmart, uh, Amazon, at Staples, Office Depot, Home Depot, Lowe's, almost every Sears, JCPenney's, I mean, almost every major retailer offers this kind of credit. As a matter of fact, Amazon's corporate credit card is one of the easiest credit cards to get when you have about five vendors reporting on your business credit reports. So retail credit is a really good way to get the money that you need to grow your business because as you can see here, nothing is needed to get approved. You don't need to have a credit check. You don't need to have collateral. You don't need to have cash flow. Anybody can buy this. And let's be honest, what, whatever you need to fund your business, whatever you need to buy, you could probably buy at Amazon. You could probably buy at Walmart. When you look at retailers, they sell at least 90, 95% of what you need money for. So don't go get a credit line to start buying office supplies. Use business credit for that purpose and free up your credit line that I'm going to help you get okay, for other purposes like payroll, like expansion, for marketing, for all of that kind of stuff. Okay, Now, you're going to need about five accounts in your business credit boards to get retail credit. Here's some examples. Here's a $2,500 uh, approval at Hertz to get rental cards, right? I don't know who gets $2,500 in rental cards, but here's an approval at Dell as well. Here's a bunch of different approvals. Uline, Suma, Strategic Network Solutions, Granger. Those are all rate. Those are all vendors. We've got National Pen. We've got uh, Sunbelt Rentals, Shell, Speedway. All of these business credit cards were obtained without a personal guarantee and credit check. So it goes to show if you start putting these things together and getting vendor credit and re retail credit, the amount of credit you're actually able to get. We can see here's a five thousand dollar approval at synchrony bank that's not even retail but actually where is it yeah it's for sam's club five thousand dollar approval for amazon here okay so again i just wanted to show you some examples of what retail credit is and real people that are getting it to fund their business and remember you don't need good credit cash flow or collateral in order to get approved anybody can actually get this okay so it says laggering but hopefully uh, i'm still good i'm coming back here because i've got everything and minimized as much as i can so hopefully it will catch back up Fleet credit. Fleet credit is used to get fuel in vehicles, repair vehicles, and maintain vehicles. If you're like me, I don't care about fleet credit. I don't have a fleet of vehicles. If you're in the transportation industry, you really care about fleet credit. It's $600 to $1,000 in order to put fuel in a big rig truck, and you don't want to use a personal credit card for that purpose or a credit line or regular credit card. That's what fleet credit is designed to do. Now, again, you don't need to have good credit. It's, there's no credit. There's no cash flow. There's no collateral requirements. All you need is about eight accounts on your business credit reports. If you've already used some vendor credit, you've already got some retail credit, and you have about eight types of accounts, then you're going to be able to get in, and you're going to be able to get in to start getting fleet credit. Okay, now here's some examples. Wawa approval. Here's an Exxon approval. Here's an approval for $3,500 for Amazon. Amazon. And then a pilot flying J for $1,000 weekly. So there's some example there. Here's another one of more gas cards. Here's a... Uh, Chevron credit card. Here's an Amazon or here's a Chevron credit card as well as many others. So it goes to show you some of the actual credit that's available. Actually, here's one of our clients, Christine. Let me know if you can hear this, but I'll, she's a perfect example of what you can do with this kind of credit. So let me see if you can hear her. Yeah. An LLC. When we found Credit Suite, we were almost ready to just shut down and say enough's enough. 
we can't do it anymore. We've gotten fuel cards through credit suite. We've got some cash credit cards through them. Uh, we've also got lines of credit for housing and equipment and things like that that we needed uh, totaling over $800,000 in credit. So we've gotten quite a bit. It gave us an opportunity to keep our company open. Okay, so the reason I wanted to show you that with Christine, Christine is, first of all, Christine has done a phenomenal job of building business credit. But she's a pristine example of what happens if you don't have cash flow, you don't have credit, you don't have collateral, you don't have any of the three C's of what's really possible to do. All of these approvals were obtained by her without a personal guarantee and credit check from five to $15,000 accounts for BJ's, BP, Fuel Man, Fleet, Exxon, Shell, all the way up to $40,000, $50,000 approvals of Pilot Flying J, Dell, Best Buy, Costco, Sears, Office Depot, all the way up to $300,000 accounts with local vendors that she does business with, even $185,000 at Ford. So it goes to show what you can do with that cash flow credit and collateral if you start dipping into business credit. And there's a lot of sources here uh, that can actually help you do so. Here's some of Christine's actual approvals. You can see her business credit reports. And you can see here, if you follow Ty Crandall's program, you'll get what you need. So she is a client, okay? So she's somebody that didn't just take our free information. She actually paid us to help her through the process, okay? Which we do have a paid program to help you get money and build business credit. You can call us and learn more about that, okay? But this is an example of what's possible with business credit, okay? And again, if you want more information on building business credit, then give us a call, 877-600-2487, creditsuite.com forward slash consult. Okay, if you go there, we will get your business credit reports with Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian at no cost. They're 100% free. They're 250 bucks from the bureaus. We'll get them for you at no cost, and we'll give you tips and tactics to improve your business credit. So all that happens on that free consultation with us, feel free to get in touch with us, and we'll help you start getting, getting started to build your business credit. Computer leases. Look, just like furniture, okay, you can lease computer equipment through Dell, through HP, okay, through almost Apple. Okay, and computer leases are another way that you can get money for your business and you don't need to have good personal credit collateral or cash flow. This says you do need good personal credit. That's actually incorrect because you can actually get computer leases even if you don't have good credit as long as you built your business credit first. So you can use your good credit to go get credit with HP, Apple, Dell, but you can also build your business credit and get approved with HP, Apple, Dell as well without a personal guarantee and without a personal credit. Check. That's credit anybody can get. So if you need one or a bunch of different computers, you are able to use this kind of financing in order to basically be able to come in here and be able to get it. Brandon says, once you have all credit, how long to get to the major credit cards? You need 14 accounts in your business credit reports and a $10,000 high limit before you can get the Visa card and MasterCard and to be able to get to auto financing. It takes 14 accounts to get there. Our clients get there in about six to eight months. We find that if you're just using training and doing it on your own, it could take you two to three years. So again, if you want the expedited path, schedule a consultation and get with us. We'll talk to you about it. Our clients are getting there in about six to eight, two month, six to eight months, but I don't want to uh, give you a, a false idea of what you may do. We find on average, it takes about two to three years if you're doing this um, on your own, even if you're following our free training. So again, hopefully that answers your question. Cash credit, which is just what Brandon mentioned, Visa card, MasterCard credit, you can get in, use anywhere. Okay, so for example, Sam's Club has a great MasterCard. This credit comes and goes. A lot of lenders, uh, credit issuers have it, and then it goes away, then it comes back. Okay, so Sam's Club MasterCard is a great program. You can use that MasterCard anywhere. You could go and use it at Costco if you want. Sam's Club also has a, re a retail credit card you could only use in their store. So that's a perfect example of Visa card, MasterCard, you can use anywhere. You don't need to have good credit. You don't need to have cash flow. You don't need to have collateral. It's something anybody can get. You have 14 business credit accounts established. One has a ten thousand dollar high. Here's a here's a couple examples of people that are actually getting these kind of cash credit cards, just so you can see what's possible. Okay, uh, and here is a bunch. When we talk about business credit it, 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 overall, here's people showing their business credit scores, so you can see what's possible. Amazon thirty five hundred dollar account. Uh, they told me today I will receive welcome letter. Then they gave her a seventy five hundred dollar account and Pilot Flying J for a thousand twelve hundred dollar gas card here. Uh, this, this looks like a $10,000 limit at Home Depot. This is a $1,000 limit at Exxon. And then let's say they called and got it bumped to $3,000. $1,500 at Sunbelt Rentals. Another $10,000 limit account at Sunbelt Rentals. Okay, this is a good example. Oh, that's Office Depot and Sunbelt Rentals. Here's a Chase card. Here's a Valero card with no personal guarantee. Here's a bunch of cards, fleet cards, Shell, Home Depot, 
Sam's Club approval, Navy Federal Credit Union, Sam's Club approval, SunTrust. Uh, here's a Phillips 76, a Dell, uh, you know, and on and on and on, right? I think you get the idea. Okay. The bottom line is there's a lot of money you can get, even if you don't have one of the three C's, just by taking the steps to build business credit. And we talked about a lot of credit you could actually be able to get along the way from vendor all the way to Visa, Visa MasterCard. So auto financing, you can also get financing for commercial vehicles, and even if it's not a commercial vehicle, even if it's a vehicle you're using once in a while to drive people around. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can definitely go to an auto dealer and qualify based on your personal credit, but you also can come in and you can qualify based on only using business credit, okay? So what's nice about this is that you're going to actually, you can actually come in and use business credit, and business credit can help you qualify for auto financing, you saw Christine got 185,000 in financing at Ford, okay, without a personal guarantee and credit check. People that offer this, Ford, GM, Toyota, Ally, those are just four off the top of my head that offer credit without a personal guarantee and without a personal credit check based on your business credit quality alone, or you could use your personal credit to qualify and still put it in your business name where your business can actually get credit for the payment of those bills. So you got two options. One is use your credit to qualify for auto financing. The other is to use your established business credit without a personal guarantee and credit check to be able to qualify for financing as well. And L says, what about if you already bought a vehicle through um, yourself, probably advised to, to make a lease to your business? Um, I'm not the guy for that. You're talking about tax deductions, things like that. I think that that makes a lot of sense, but you want to talk to an accountant for that purpose. Uh, James from YouTube says, how long does it take to get a DMB number? It will take 30 days or less. We find on average, guys, excuse me, I'm, I'm fidgeting around. I, I stand for all my live trainings. This is the only one I've sat down for because we're going to go so long today. I didn't think it would be a good idea to be on my feet. So I'm going to fidget around a little. Don't mind me there. James, it should take 30 days or less. Uh, we find on average it takes about two weeks to get your Dunn's number. You can get your free Dunn's number at creditsuite.com forward slash Dunn's. Hey, getting value? Hit the like button, hit the love button, hit the share button. It's the only thing I'll ask you to do. But if you're really getting value, I'm trying to pour everything into this. Please hit the like button, hit the love button, hit the share button. It means a lot to me. And like and subscribe on the channel that you're actually on. Okay. And uh, Gerald said from, the, from my webinar says, EIN and tax ID is the same. Yeah, your tax ID number is your EIN number. Can you use a number that forwards to your phone number? You can absolutely get any business phone number and use it to forward to your cell phone. And uh, Steve says, Credit Safe Monitor is now moving into USA. Credit Safe, I've said for years, is going to be a formidable foe to Dun & Bradstreet Equifax Experian. You need to pay attention to Credit Safe. We even in our system start saying who reports to Credit Safe because they are going to be so popular. Fowler says, are vehicles for your business cargo vans considered for equipment financing? You can get equipment financing on vehicles like what you're describing, as well as other kinds of vehicles, even 18 wheelers. So that could be equipment financing. There's also auto financing you can get for that. Give us a call. We can actually talk through some scenarios with you. And uh, Nan says, please cover credit sources that are inclined just to new startup individuals, women. We will talk about that. I got plenty of options to still go over today. Okay. We talked a little bit about this. Uh, the other thing I didn't show you about building business credit is that as you build business credit, the recommendation of credit you get from credit issuers goes up. Remember the first one I showed you was somebody that had no credit with a thousand dollar recommendation of credit. Then I showed you somebody with one account earlier and they had $2,500 recommendation of credit. Here's somebody with nearly 7,000 recommendation of credit with two accounts reporting. Here's somebody with nearly 16,000 with three accounts reporting. Here's somebody with four accounts reporting is being recommended for nearly 66,000. And here's somebody that's being recommended for $724,000 in financing. And they have 15 accounts in the business credit reports. Why I show you this is again, what it comes down to is that by building your business credit, you will help yourself get maximum funding. That's what it comes down to. If you want to get higher loan amounts, higher credit line limits, higher credit card limits, it comes down to helping build your business credit. By building your business credit, that's going to help you qualify for all, all kinds of financing. Uh, here's one of our clients, James. Without Credit Suite, building business credit was hard. We didn't know underwriting guidelines, vendor to select, or how to build credit. We were just taking a shot in the dark. What's great about Credit Suite is having the support with the team, and they teach you how to structure your business properly. Before them, I was missing things and getting denied. That's why I'm showing it to you. I want to show you real case studies of people that had these problems, fixed what I'm telling you to fix, then the results they're able to get. And I love being able to get my business credit cards and my business name with no personal guarantee because it separates my my personal from my business, which is awesome. The team is very supportive and knowledgeable about business credit, securing the best financial options. 
and they go through everything thoroughly. They put everything on my fingertips and allows me to have full control of my success. My business. Look, this is what happens when you improve your fundability and you build your business credit. Again, you need help along the way. That's what we do. All you have to do is go to 877-600-2487. Go to creditsuite.com forward slash console. Get with our team and we'll give you a free business credit or free business credit assessment. See where you are now. Give you tips and tactics to build your business credit and talk to you about all the funding you can get as well as the fundability things you need to fix. Number 40, peer-to-peer -peer lending. Hard to believe we've only made it through 10. We've got 40 more to go. So peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. So this has changed a lot through COVID. P2P are not lenders. What happens is this. They are a platform that sits in the middle of you as a borrower and what we call backers are people with money. The backers in P2P are people just like you and I. They're just regular people that want to get a rate of return on our money better than the stock market. We don't want to invest in publicly owned companies. And hey, we'd like to invest in privately owned companies, not public. So we go to a peer-to-peer -peer lender, for example, like Prosper. And then what we do is we invest, we give Prosper money. Prosper pulls together money from a bunch of people and then gives it to people in the form of loans. Then you get a rate of return and I get a rate of return as an investor. So when we talk about peer-to-peer -peer lending, it's not the, these people I talk about like Prosper and Lending Club, they're not lenders. They don't lend money. What they do is they bring together backers, people with money, and they then pull together the money and they give it to borrowers, people that want money. Now, this has really changed during COVID because it used to be some of the biggest ones out there okay, are uh, Prosper and Lending Club. Lending Club accounts for 42% of all peer-to-peer -peer lending. Prosper was the first one out there. Right now, they're not doing business lending. They're only doing personal loans. Still not bad to consider to start the business and get it off the ground, but hopefully we're seeing that they will return to business lending, but they're not currently. Street shares is also common in this space. And Upstart, who's always done loans up to $35,000 for startup businesses, is another peer-to-peer -peer lending. But again, during COVID in 2021, this is kind of, they've pulled back a little for business to business lending in the peer to peer space. We're hoping it will open back up and they will come back full bore here into 2021, but we'll see what happens. They still currently, a lot of them offer great personal loan options, but a lot of them will pull back some on the business business lending, but I still want to give them to you as a great option. Amazon through Bank of America. Amazon has a great account if you are an Amazon seller. It is backed by Bank of America. It's a loan. It does require good personal credit in order to actually get approved, okay? And you need to have cash flow as well. But the approval is not really based on personal credit, like most Bank of America financing. The approval is basically based on how much volume you're processing through your Amazon account and how long you've been selling with Amazon. So if you do sell with Amazon, you want to go to your Amazon central account and in the back office, you're going to be able to access this Bank of America account. Now, Amazon also back there has a Marcus account, which just came about in 2020. And this is interesting because Amazon talked about having a marketplace for their sellers. They finally went in and they actually Goldman Sachs got the contract to be their sole provider of credit lines. You know why? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Okay, Goldman Sachs was the one that backed the purchase of Whole Foods. So when Amazon went to buy Whole Foods, Marcus or Goldman Sachs backed that. They're financially backed it for that transaction to happen. And one of the side benefits is that as a result, Goldman Sachs and their Marcus brand got the, all the credit line business from Amazon. You can access in your Amazon Central account. Again, a lot of it has to do more with the amount of volume you're processing with Amazon, how long you've been processing with Amazon. But if you're an Amazon seller, you definitely want to consider the Amazon Marcus account. It's a great credit line to be able to use. Now, the third option you're going to find in Amazon Central account as an Amazon seller is Amazon's corporate credit card. And I love this one. No personal guarantee, no credit check, net 55 terms that give you nearly two months to pay the money back. And this is super simple to get. As a matter of fact, when our clients get some vendor credit, about five accounts, this is one of the first accounts that a lot of them get. And if you looked at some of the approvals I showed you already, you saw multiple people with $10,000 approvals. We see ten to forty thousand dollar Amazon corporate credit card approvals all the time from our clients. Very quick into the business credit building process, sixty to ninety days. This is easier to get than the Marcus and Bank of America from them. And again, really good way to go. Almost two months to pay it back. You can be able to come in and be able to get a very high limit and get it approved very quickly. So something that you really want to look into as well. 
Uh, no other questions really coming in here uh, that I see in the question. And uh, Daryl says, I got $2,800 approved from Crown. That's awesome. Are we going to get access to the slides after the webinar? You'll get access to a playback if you attend to the end of the actual webinar. And, you know, uh, we, I'll get, my team's not going to like this, but we, we usually reserve this for our partners. They use this to be able, we have partners that sell business credit financing through us. And we give them exclusive access to our webinar so they can use to actually sell business credit financing out in the space. I am going to talk to our team and I am going to have them include this PowerPoint as a bonus. So if you are actually getting started with us this week to build business credit, get financing, and I'll talk to you about as we get closer to the end of the training, that I will include the slides as a bonus for that, just so you know, to answer your question, because multiple people are asking that same question. Okay. Amazon corporate credit card, uh, net 55, normal APR type terms. Kick further, one of my favorite funding sources from 2020. I love this program. This is phenomenal. If you are an e-commerce seller, if you sell products and services online, you need to know about Kick Further. It's freaking fantastic. So what Kick Further does is they crowdfund the purchase of your inventory. So let's say I'm selling uh, my Dave Wyman. His, here's one of my good friends, Dave Wyman here. He sells these little books that all the stuff's falling out of Dave. It's a bad example. But it's all these little sticky notes on, right? And then, so let's say I'm selling here, Dave Wyman. It's like a perfect advertisement for you. But let's say I'm selling these little books here on Amazon, right? So I sell a bunch. I've proven that I have 150,000 in sales of these books. So now what I'm able to do is I can go to kick further and I need another 200,000, let's say, in orders. Let's, let's just make it practical. Let's say it's 20,000. I need to buy 20,000 more of these things to sell on my Amazon store, to sell on my you know, Shopify store, my wherever. Okay. The other girl, that, the dude on TikTok that goes and interviews people and says, uh, what do you do for a living? She was driving a Lamborghini and she had a a store selling t-shirts online, okay? So a lot of money to be made in e-commerce right now, especially in a post-COVID world. So if you're selling something like this now, you don't need to buy it anymore. Kick further, crowdfunds the money to get the inventory. They go to their crowd of backers, they get the money. Then you use their money to buy the inventory you're actually gonna sell, right? And then you actually have all the money you need to sell the inventory. Then as I sell these things, I pay back kick further what I actually borrowed. So basically what I'm saying is once you've proven yourself as an e-commerce entrepreneur, and this can be a lot of you that are already in e-commerce or getting into e-commerce, then you can use kick further to fund your actual inventory so you don't need to buy it anymore. Now I get my money in. I need to buy more of these things. I go to kick further. They give me the money. I go use their money. I buy more of these things. I sell more of these things, and I use it to pay back uh, the money for kick further. And apparently this segment is sponsored by Wiley Consulting. I'm just kidding. But I'm just giving it as an example. This is fantastic for e-commerce entrepreneurs because you don't need to buy your inventory anymore. And you can get approved at kickfurther.com or you can go right to creditsuite.com forward slash kickfurther to be able to get approved. Great way to get funding, not really based on personal credit, not based on collateral. It's just based on the fact that you're doing consistent cash flow and that you've done 150,000 in e-commerce sales already. And don't forget, again, you get a free consultation with this training. So if you want to know, can you qualify for Kick Further? Can you qualify for any of the programs we're talking about? Give us a ring, 877-600-2487. Schedule online at creditsuite.com forward slash console. We'll get your business credit reports for free. We'll give you tips on building your business credit. And we'll do a free fund fundability assessment as well as a funding assessment to see what you need to fix with fundability and also to see what you need to fix or, or what kind of funding you can qualify for now. Eric says, will this be available in the back office? I will get it to our team as a partner to make sure that this is available in your back office as well. And Assistant says, Ty is amazing. Uh, he won't lead you down the wrong path. I appreciate that very much. 35 on our list of 50, inventory financing. So if you already had inventory, but you spread yourself too thin, you could get as much financing as 50% of the value of your inventory using inventory finance. There's only one funder in the country that does this program. That's how, that's how in the weeds I'm getting with finding funding programs that are available for you. One funder in the country that does this thing. But again, if you have a half a million dollars of value in your inventory, you can get a credit line borrowed against that actual inventory. You can also use this to buy inventory as well. So if you need to put inventory on shelves, you need to look at inventory financing. If you want to borrow against inventory you already have, you need to look into inventory financing. And again, it's a great alternative to kick further because this works for non-e-commerce entrepreneurs 
whereas kick further is just for e-commerce oh fun box man i keep finding my favorite ones here like, i can't say favorite enough but there's i've gone over so many and fun box is one of my absolute favorites and i'll tell you why i love fun box we, we are the number one affiliate with Funbox. We send more business to them than any other source that they have. And we do it because they approve everybody. <laughs> like well, how we get our clients funding is we'll pre-qualify you for funding. We'll find the best funding options that work for you. Then we go and get, help you get approved. We get you with the right broker, the right source to get approved. When you are done, we take everybody to Funbox. Everybody goes to Funbox in the end to get even more money. Now, Funbox, you can get approved at creditsuite.com forward slash Funbox. And at creditsuite.com forward slash Funbox, you could typically, here's the approvals. And I'll give you an example of how this works. A buddy of mine was in credit repair, high risk industry because he's in financial services. And he said, Ty, I need like a, I need like a $30,000 uh, a loan. Will you get me one of those merchant cash advances? And I asked him some questions. I said, no, I'm not going to get you an expensive merchant cash advance. I want to take you down a different route. Here's what we're going to do. I sent him to, we sent him to Funbox. Funbox got them a, I don't know, $3,000 approval, right? Which I knew the, their first approvals were always low, less than five, 10 grand. Then I had them supply his tax returns. When you supply your tax returns and you can show that you're generating revenue and that you're managing your money responsibly, then they approved them with $30,000 credit line. Here's the best parts about Funbox. Funbox is charges a half a percent interest for every week the money is outstanding. In his case, he just needed to buy something and pay it back within a month. So he did so and he paid like one and a half percent on the money when he was trying to get a merchant cash advance, which would have charged him 35%. He got one and a half percent interest instead of 35%. So Funbox is fantastic. This is how we mitigated COVID. We now have a hundred thousand dollar credit line with Funbox. We started putting all of our money on the credit line and keeping our cash to figure out what was going to happen with COVID. Then things were okay. Then we paid our credit line off. So Funbox will give you six months to pay back what you borrow. Usual interest rate, about a half a percent on every week outstanding. They just care about your cash flow. That's what you need to qualify. They will do a credit check in some cases, but they don't really care about personal credit quality. We see them improve people all the time with subpar credit. Uh, if you've been in business six months or less, you want to try Funbox now. If your credit's pretty good, I go through Credit Line Hybrid first and do Funbox last because Funbox will put an inquiry on your credit report. And you want to save those inquiries for credit line hybrid. Go credit line hybrid first, then do anything else like Funbox that can actually have an inquiry on your credit report. You can get approved at creditsuite.com forward slash Funbox. One of my top five favorites. I've shown you some of my favorites. Credit line hybrid is definitely one of my favorites. Kick further is definitely one of my favorites. Funbox is definitely one of my top five favorites as well. Something you definitely, definitely want to look into. Number 33, account receivable financing, also called AR financing, also called AR factoring, also called account receivable factoring. I can go on and on. It goes by a lot of names. But here's how it works. It's pretty simple. Okay. If you enroll with Credit Suite, we have we allow you an opportunity to pay on terms. So if you enroll with us, we give you seven months to pay. You get full access to our advisors or software. I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm not, not pitching. Just give me an example. Okay. You get full access to our software and our advisors, everything to help you get money for your business, build business credit, expedite it like that, right? And we give you seven months to pay. That's called an account receivable. We're letting you pay on terms. We're selling you something for a set price, let's say $3,000, which is what we sell our finance suite for. We're letting you pay over seven months. And that means that the fact that you bought it and owe us money, that is an asset. That is collateral. That is the number one form of collateral used for SBA loans. Number one. So lessons to be learned here. If you're not letting your customers pay you on terms, you should be. You should be letting your customers pay you on terms because first of all, you're going to attract more customers because you're letting them give you a longer time period to pay. Look, 20% of our clients pay in one payment because we give them a big discount if they do. Okay, 80% pay on payments. If we didn't let our clients pay on payments, then we'd have a lot less business, right? So if you let your customers pay you on terms, then first of all, you attract a lot more customers. Secondly, you have an asset that is the number one asset for SBA loans. So if anybody wants to buy your business, they can use that asset to get money to buy your business from you down the road if you want to sell it. If you want to be able to actually come in and get money for your business, you can then use that as collateral to borrow against and get money. And AR financing is fairly easy to get. You don't need to have good credit. You don't even need to really have cash flow. I messed this image up too. You only need collateral. The collateral is the AR. And AR rates are as low as 1.33%. So your factor rates are so cheap and it gets more expensive the longer the money's outstanding. But the bottom line is this can be cheaper for you 
than actually using letting your customers pay on credit cards. And nowadays, you can go to places like Funbox and get 90% financing on the receivables. What that means is it means if I have a million dollars, let's just make it reasonable. Let's say it's $100,000 in account receivables. Well, then I can borrow as much as 90% of that and get that money right away. So instead of waiting seven months to get my 100 grand, I can get 90 of the 100 grand tomorrow, 24 hours. And then the rest of the money I get when the actual per, with the person paying the invoice pays that full invoice. The invoice is paid. I get the rest of the money minus the actual lender's fees. So it allows your, your customers to pay on terms. You get a big asset for your business that helps you get SBA loans in the future. and also helps you get potential investors to buy your business. And you also can borrow against that and get money at really good terms, even if your credit's horrible. I love AR Factory. It's a great way to go. 401k financing. This is not really a loan. Ultimately, what you're doing is you're basically um, rolling over a 401k from where you have it now into your own business. Think about a 401k for a second. 401k, you're investing in the publicly owned companies, right? What you're doing here is instead of going to publicly owned, you're investing in your own business. This is the number one program that we see partners use that are starting a business together. They tap into their 401ks, they get involved, and they start using 401k financing. You can borrow as much as 100% of the value of your 401k. And remember, it doesn't have to be yours. It can be somebody around you's 401k instead of yours. And you can get a loan or a credit line as low as 5%. So you can get a 5% loan or credit line. You can see, for those, anybody's paying attention, I'm not looking at my slides. So if this makes sense, you want to take a screenshot because I'm just telling you about it and then I'm, and I'm scrolling through it pretty quick. So you want to take a screenshot because I could be going pretty quick. So you need to have at least 25, preferably 35,000 in a 401k. If you have that, you're good. You don't need any other kind of collateral. You don't need to have good credit. You don't need to have cash flow. There's a good chance you're able to get approved for 100% of the value of what's in your actual 401k, okay? So really good funding option. Now, another is IRA financing. And with this one, it works very similar. Approval and funding in less than three weeks. You can use IRAs, borrow as much as 100% financing against the actual IRA value that you have. All you need is the collateral of the IRA. Okay, You don't need to have good credit. You don't need to have cash flow. You can get it as a startup business. You can tap into somebody else's IRA as well. Now, stock, stock financing or what's called securities financing is where you can borrow against stocks and get the credit line for as much as 90% of the value of the stocks. Again, the interest rate's super low. You can be able to get approved for as low as 1.6%. Here's what I love most. I don't even understand this kind of financing because it doesn't even make sense. It's like stealing. It's not like stealing. It's like double dipping. It's like cheating. Here's what I mean. You still earn the interest on your stocks and bonds. You still earn the interest on the stocks. So I have money invested in the stock market. Let's say I have 20 grand invested in the stock market. I can keep it in the stock market, still earning interest, but I can also use it as collateral, borrow against it, and get a low interest rate credit line to fund my business. I'm kind of using my money in two places. It's still invested in earning interest like it always did for me. And then it's over here now as a credit line being used to fund my business and getting an even greater rate of return. This is one of the smartest kind of financing I've really seen in a long time. And what I like about it is that you can also tap into family and friends stocks and bonds as well. So for example, you know, when we look at 75% of entrepreneurs get money from family and friends, well, if I go to my dad today and I say, dad, I need 20 grand to get a business off the ground. My dad would sell stocks to give me my 20 grand. That's what my dad would do for me. But instead I can go, dad, I need 20 grand to start a business. I don't want you to sell your stocks. There's this great program called securities financing. I can borrow against one of your stocks, get a credit line that I need. You still are in the interest. Everything is still kosher in your world. And the only way you'd be hurt is if I default and then they sell the 20 grand in stocks and they take it, which if you gave me the money, you'd be out that anyways. This is a way easier money, to, way easier way to solicit people to let you access or get money from than just going to my family or friends to get cash. Because if I go to them to get cash, they have to sell the stocks. But if I go to them using this program, they could keep the stocks in place, still earn interest, and then I can actually come in and be able to get the credit line I need. Now, the same thing applies for bonds as well. So I love securities-based financing. It makes a lot of sense if you have stocks and bonds or someone around you has stocks and bonds that they actually may be able to consider. And John says, good job, Funbox. I love Funbox. They are fantastic. Um, and we've got, we're talking, uh, what, our custom, uh, what, what if our business name is a little too long to fit in DMV? Shorten your business name. 
Nobody needs to have a name that's that long. It's really hard for your customers to be able to access. And you're probably going to have a hard time getting a website, email address, those type of things as well. Robin says, how to set up Experian and Equifax business credit. I've already talked you through that indirectly. You get your fundability set up. You go to those vendors that I talked about at the beginning of this training. You move to that retail credit. You move to fleet credit. As you start to go to get that credit, you'll find credit that reports the Equifax Experian and establish credit with both of those reporting agencies. And Cheryl says, uh, um, uh, Ty, does it matter how much you use with each account? It does. Your business credit reports show the recent amount of credit you've used over the last year, not your credit limit. So the recent amount of credit you're using is going to determine the limits on the following credit cards you get. The more money you're using, the higher your future credit card limits will be. Great question. And here's one of our clients, Sam, that typed into, tapped into this kind of financing to be able to get money for his business. My business is Dragon Gym, a martial arts studio that was founded in 1973 by my instructor, Diego, and took over by my partner and I 10 years ago. About a year and a half ago, my business partner and I decided within 18 months, we were going to open our second location. We got connected with Credit Suite. We were able to accelerate our timeline and open this location in six months instead of 18. Getting the financing meant that we could start fulfilling our dream to have 10 or more locations across the country. Look, I don't want to convince you that just because you're on this training, you're going to get these kind of results. FTC disclosure. All of these people I show you are our clients. Okay, they're the ones that are paying us money to go in and get them these kind of results. It's part of why they're getting these results in the time periods they are. But I wanted to show Sam as an example because Sam used Credit Line Hybrid and he also tapped into other programs we're talking about here with securities financing and other to be able to open a second location. And in 18 months, he opened his third location. Think about that. He had a business for 10 years that's limited based on the ability, the people in his immediate circle or in his community, right? In, Pens in Chesterfield, Pennsylvania. Then he says, hey, let's open a second location in a year and a half. He comes to us. We help him get the money in six months to open a second location. And within another year, in the 18 months he wanted to open a second location, they opened three. So then they had three locations. Then they used the funding to navigate them through COVID and to even bring an online program to their business where now they're killing it online and they're getting back to a normal that they were into in their actual gym. So that's what happens when you use multiple forms of this kind of financing and tap into these kind of credit lines to be able to actually grow your business. And again, I'm going to remind you throughout, if we can help you, if you want a funding assessment to see all the funding you can get now and help building your business credit, give us a call 877-600-2487, creditsuite.com forward slash consult. If you're getting value, hit the like button, hit the love button, hit the share button. Okay, so bonds financing, exactly the same as what we talked about with stock financing. You use bonds to financing to be able to qualify for financing instead of stocks. You can get interest rates as low as 1.6%. Okay, you're using, uh, and you end up, you're approving a loan based on portfolio of U.S. Treasury notes. Okay, and again, all you need is 25000 or more in bonds to qualify. 90% financing, you can use your bonds or you can use those of somebody else's. 28, angel investing. Angel investing is not what a lot of us think it is to be. There is really two kinds of angel investing. There's what's called affiliated angel investing and what's called unaffiliated angel investing. Unaffiliated angel investing is not what we're all familiar with. But what it is, is it's getting money from people that are affiliated with you, people you know. It's your mom and your dad. It's your brother. It's your sister. It's your friend. It's your relative. It's your potential and business investor. A lot of unaffiliated angels, the thing we think about when we think about angel investing, people we don't know giving us money to start a business, they typically get involved when they see other pale people already giving you money. Hey, there are a lot of places out there that they even require that you get money from somewhere else before they'll give you money. But if you get money from family, friends, other people, affiliated angels, it's easier to attract unaffiliated angels into the mix. Now, when we talk about angel investing, affiliated angels could be friends. They could be colleagues. They could be investors. They could be anybody that you know in your circle. Hey, unaffiliated angels really are people that don't know anything about you. And I guarantee you that they are going to be way happier lending you money if they see the people already in your circle have given you money. Angel investors are not debt financing. So there's two kinds of financing we're talking about today. Debt, I'm getting a loan, I'm getting a credit line from a bank, from a financial institution, I'm paying interest, I'm paying fees, and I'm taking on debt that has to be paid back. Equity financing, which we're going to talk a lot about here, we got a lot more to cover. Equity financing, I'm not taking on any debt. What's happening is I'm giving somebody ownership interest in my business. I'm giving them equity ownership. I'm giving them stock, basically, per se, in my business. So they actually come in 
And they um, sort of started a new one meeting with this account. Okay. So uh, give me a second here. I'm going to have to fire up um, my training here. Okay. So give me just one second. And I am actually going to have to make a change. So, okay, everybody, hang on with me. This is the problem with going uh, live is that we are not able to. I actually just realized that my weekly webinar that takes place at three is is uh, happening now uh it, or it's going to happen at three o'clock and uh in the other meeting okay so give me a second here okay technical difficulties this is what happens when we go live on a three-hour webinar everybody so just stick with me for a second here I, I just realized that i have multiple trainings people that are trying to log in um and that can't happen when we're all using the same link so this is going to be one minute to fix don't use my zoom don't do the weekly webinar because i'm i'm using the link all right so slack hopefully slack will come to the rescue and we will see what happens here and i am back so everybody welcome back i'm sorry you guys got kicked out that we're attending on the webinar that was completely my bad i've got a webinar that starts at three and i just now realized that they are using the exact same zoom link which is a problem okay so angel investing, this is equity financing. We're giving away equity in the business in exchange for money. We are not taking on debt. Okay, I appreciate everybody's patience. Everybody's laughing at me. This is the problem. This is what happens when you go live for three hours. Who knows what's going to happen? So angel investing, investing startup businesses. Typically, they're ones to give you maybe 50 grand max. And they'll get invested when you have an idea, when you have a concept, even before you start to generate revenue. Venture capital is the next stage after it. Venture capital are, is, again, another form of equity financing, okay, where you're actually able to come in and be able to get capital from private investors. They want a bigger ownership stake of your business than angel investors do. You typically have to come in and be able to give up, uh, you know, we see them on Shark Tank all the time, right? 25, 30, 50% ownership in the business to get it, but they also give larger sums of money. Instead of 25, 50 grand, a lot of venture capitals will come in and they will actually want to give you, uh, you know, a ton more money. They will want to come in and give you hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars. Now, what's interesting about venture capitalists and angel investors, they're the exact opposite of lenders. Lenders are conservative with risk, right? The higher the risk, the more money, the, the more inclined they are not to lend, the, the higher amount of the interest they charge you. But when we look at venture capital and angel investors, it's exactly the opposite. Venture capital and angel investors want high risk industries. They want unicorns. They want businesses that can go to the, the, the atmosphere. They, they're brand new. They're trendsetters. They're creating new categories. These are very high risk investments. But if the investment works, very high return for them. So if you're coming up with an idea or a concept or a new kind of business that it, or if you've got something that's going to disrupt an industry or you're doing something way different than anybody else in your industry is doing, this is where venture capital comes in. This is where angel investing come in. This is where these private investors that will help you. And look, if you're like, I don't want to give up ownership equity in my business, guys, you, you probably know Jeff Bezos, right? You know, Amazon, look back at the founding story of how Amazon was created. Jeff gave away massive amounts of equity in Amazon in the early years as he was trying to get off the ground. It's how Amazon grew to the way it was. It's how they grew their fulfillment centers. It's how they started Kindle. It's how they did everything that Amazon does because he gave away ownership equity. And he's now the richest man in the world, I think, right? Probably not after his divorce. He might have fallen down that quite a bit. She's one of the richest people in the world now. But bottom line is, is that he's one of the richest people in the world and gave away a lot of ownership interest. So if you have a concept that's that's absolutely groundbreaking or going to disrupt an industry or way different than anything that's happening in your industry, you want to get away from debt and you want to start looking into equity financing like venture capital and angel investing because you might have to give up ownership interest. But again, you know, if we look at Jeff Bezos and so many others that we could use as examples, they didn't do too bad when their concept absolutely uh, knocked it out of the park, right? So something to consider. Okay, so PayPal. Getting a loan from PayPal, I love PayPal. Love them, love them, love them. They say you got to be in business nine months. We've seen people in as little as six months, I think, being able to qualify for PayPal. A lot of reasons that I love PayPal financing. You get approved for up to a half a million dollars. You get approved for as much as 
35% of your annual sales of PayPal. That is ridiculous. And it doesn't even make any sense. To give you an idea, they, they mimic a program called revenue lending, which I'm sure we'll talk about later today. Revenue lending is where you just basically get money because you have consistent revenue. Well, with PayPal, they are normal revenue lending. They will give you as much as 12% of your annual revenue. They'll lend you as much as 12% of your annual revenue. PayPal will give you 35% of what you process through them. That's three times higher than the industry standard. It's absurd. And they charge as little as 500 bucks. Sometimes they don't even charge interest. And they're primarily driven based on the amount of money going through PayPal. So the longer you've been with them, the more money is going to your account, the more money you're going to qualify for. They don't really care about your credit. Sometimes they'll do a credit check. Sometimes they don't. They don't care about your collateral. They don't care about your cash flow. What they care about, well, they do care about cash flow. They care about your cash flow going through your PayPal account. So if you're not using PayPal now to accept payments from your customer, get PayPal. Let your customers pay you through PayPal. It's one of the easiest ways to get money for your business is going through PayPal financing. And if you are using PayPal, look into PayPal financing. You can get as much as 35% of what you're processing annually through PayPal. One of the easiest types of financing I've ever seen that you're actually able to come in and get. Okay, Square is yet another one. So with Square, if you're financing payments through Square, they are very similar. They've got a great funding program with hundreds of thousands of dollars you can get just based on your Square transactions. So Square is another option to consider if you're not accepting payments from them now, consider it. PayPal, I think, is better uh, when it comes to getting money from them, not, not what you use it for. But I mean, actually getting capital from, but Square is still another option. And again, you can get approved for up to $100,000 with them, one flat fee. They don't charge you a bunch of interest, and your approval is based on the cash flow you're running through your Square account. Very similar to Stripe. If you're money, managing money through Stripe, then you really want to consider being able to use Stripe for financing as well because Stripe has Stripe has a program where you're able to come in and get financing and you're able to get approved for, I think, like up to $100,000 or more with them. And again, uh, one set fee, you don't get charged a lot of interest with them. And what you get, well, your qualification is based on what you process through Stripe. It's not based on your collateral. It's not based on... Uh, your cash flow or based on your collateral or credit. It's based on your cash flow that you've actually got going through Stripe. And again, it's just a reminder, if we can help you, give us a call, creditsuite.com forward slash console, because any of these options we can talk through with you, qualify you for funding, talk to you about building your business credit and do a free fundability assessment. And don't forget, if you're getting value, hit the like button, hit the love button, hit the share button. I can see in real time when you're doing that. I do not have very many likes and loves. And I should have a lot more as hard as I'm working to make this happen for y'all. So please do that for me. I get a lot of, of benefit from that when you do that. Okay. And um, Jason says, or uh, Vanessa says, is the beauty industry considered a high-risk industry? No, not for many lending sources. Uh, some lending sources it may be, uh, but not. And doesn't have those buttons. Okay. I have a business credit card. Okay. Uh, to Chase with a credit limit of 15K. Does that count as a business credit? The answer, uh, Madeline, is it depends on if it reports to the business credit reporting agency. Madeline brought up a great point. That's why I answer some questions along the way here. The reason I do that is because um, as what happens is if you come in and ask a credit issuer before you apply where they report, it's your best indicator of what you're going to get. They'll either tell you to report to consumer credit or the business credit reporting agencies or nowhere. I don't know. Real business credit reports to the business credit reporting agencies without a personal guarantee. You have to ask them where it reports to really know for sure. Okay, we talked about Stripe. So merchant lines of credit. So merchant line, a uh, merchant lines of credit are basically credit lines that are issued from merchant or merchant <laughs> MCA providers. So there are what are called merchant cash advances or MCAs. And these lenders, some of them will offer you credit lines as loans or credit lines as well as loans. So you're able to get interest rates that are pretty high sometimes, 8 to 35, 45%. Okay. But um, the, inter the interesting thing about them is, is it's very easy to be able to qualify. It, all they do is you have to have six months in business, 5000 a month in revenue. They'll work with you if you have bad credit. They'll work with you if you don't have collateral. You get approved and funded within 24 hours. This is one of the easiest ways to get money for your business if you're processing money through credit cards. Now, Another alternative is one we mentioned earlier, which is business revenue lending, also known as cash flow financing. With this, the lender and merchant cash advances, the lender will do about 12% of whatever you're processing in your bank account on an annual basis. 
So all you have to have is consistent money coming into that bank account, made it to bank account responsibly. You don't need to have good credit. You don't need to have collateral. If you have consistent revenue, there's a very good chance that you're able to come in and get approved. And you can get funded in as little as 24 hours. And you can get funding typically for as much as $500,000. So you can typically get 12% of your annual revenue or as much as a half a million dollars in funding. And I find that 80% of our clients that get this come back when they paid half of it off and get even more money. So here's one of our clients, Dr. Brandon. Now he originally approached us to get $417,000 to pay off a tax lien. What's interesting about him is that he used many of these options we're talking about, including cash flow financing. He came in, he said, I need advice on shutting down my business. We're like, what about getting money? He's like, I can't get money. I tried everywhere. My credit score is 580. I got to pay the IRS 400,000. I don't have it. I'm done. And we said, let's see what we can do. In the end, to make a long story short, we ended up getting $1.5 million in total funding, combining multiple of these programs we talked about. That's being smart is when you multiply these programs, when you use business credit cards to fund the stuff that business credit cards buys and you get cash flow financing for the stuff that you need to invest in that you're going to get a quick rate of return and use the fund box credit line to carry you whenever you're uncertain about things like COVID. When you combine them like he did, he ends up with a million and a half dollars in funding. He opens up a second practice, pays off his tax lien, and runs for political office. Okay, big jump from calling us to shut down his business. But I wanted to show you as an example because he used cash flow financing to do it. And he also combined multiple funding programs to be able to do that as well. So, um, okay, so merchant cash advances. We talked about merchant cash advances, unsecured credit cards. These are normal business credit cards that you're able to get. You could even get them from places like Capital One Spark. Wells Fargo has a great secure credit card as well. APRs vary, but you can get them in your business name. They're based, typically based on good personal credit, but some of them like Capital One Spark, you can get approved with like a 620 FICO score. Others like American Express Blue, American Express Blue Plus, Chase Cash, uh, Chase Cash Plus. Those are some of the best credit cards I found in the business space. And those credit cards will give you good points, zero dollar fees typically, low APRs, introductory rates. Okay. And you're able to get all of that um, with if you have good credit or some cases like Capital One Spark, even if you have average credit. But you need to see there where they're reporting because where they're reporting, or excuse me, you need to see where they're reporting because Capital One Spark, for example, reports to all or reports to consumer and commercial reporting agencies not just commercial. So you want to get ones that report to the business credit reporting agencies if you can, okay? But if you can't, you can't. You just need to know that if you're using those credit cards to report your personal credit reports, it creates a problem because it can really lower your absolute FICO score. And Brian says, do you know of any mortgage note lo payment loan services that report to the business credit? I don't, not on no mortgage notes. I do not know that. I do know commercial real estate funders that do, but not on mortgage notes like you're describing. Charles says, is real estate agent considered high risk? Yes, it is absolutely um, because you're in you're 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 in me you're in my world. It's, I'm here too. We, we share high risk because we're in financial services, mortgages, financial services. And you're saying, what's a better NAICS code? I get that question a lot. I just don't know. Like I don't have all the NAICS codes memorized. I, my brain just won't. I don't have room for that in there. So you have to look that up yourself. But there's about 25 subcategories to real estate under the NEICS code. You can go to neicscode.com and figure out what works best for you. But I don't know that off the top of my head. I wish I could help you. Book of business financing. I love this. If you're an insurance agent or if you want to buy an insurance agency, which one of my friends did, I'm helping him use this financing to do it. Or if you want to expand an existing agency you already own, you could borrow against the book of business you already have of your customers to be able to get financing. Now, State Farm's not eligible because you don't actually own your book of business, but most other kind of insurance companies do. You can get an insurance loan for up to five, 10 years, low interest rate, a couple percent over prime, like 8% interest. They don't care about personal credit. They're going to ask you for references. They want you to have average credit, I think like six, 600 type credit score. But if you're in the insurance industry, this is the best kind of financing you're going to have. This is the only, I've been in financial services 20 years. This is the only kind of financing I've ever found in my entire life where more people than not won't even accept the full amount they're approved with. They ask for less. Everything else is the same. I mean, when I own, own a mortgage company, when I've helped people get business loans, personal loans, everybody wants more money than they qualify to get. But in this one program, everybody gets approved for more money than they even need. 
and they can't even access all the money they're approved for. So this is a great way to go if you're in the insurance industry or interested in getting in the insurance industry. This should show up a green light. COVID's a great time right now to buy a business. If you're gonna buy a business, you could use this in the existing book of business or a bit insurance agency to buy that insurance agency. Something to consider right now. And if you're in the insurance industry, you can use that to expand or borrow against your, your renewables just to do whatever it is that you're gonna do with your business. Rewards-based crowdfunding. This is places like Kickstarter, it's places like Indiegogo. This is where you wanna run a project to raise money from a crowd of people if you have something unique. Uh, it, it's not gonna work for your real estate investor. Although there is crowdfunding out there for real estate investors specifically, but it's not rewards-based crowdfunding. That's a whole conversation for a different day. I didn't even include that in here. So I wanna write a number 18 and 18-1. 18, 18 is rewards-based crowdfunding, 18-1 is going to be one for real estate investors. I can't think about the one off the top of my head that does it, but there is crowdfunding specifically for real estate investors out there. And I've covered this on YouTube before. I can't think about the name of my head. Indigo, Indiegogo, uh, Kickstarter are the most familiar here in rewards-based crowdfunding. We've got a unique product. We've got something the world hasn't seen. We've got something disruptive. We could go in and raise money from a crowd of people in order to get it. Now, we typically don't have to, it's not debt. It's not money that has to be paid back. A lot of people, with, with rewards-based crowdfunding are giving a reward. You're giving them an incentive if they give you money. I'm giving them an ebook. I'm giving them something of value if they give me money, preferably an electronically delivered uh, reward, not something you have to mail to them. It's easier to control. Um, and rewards-based crowdfunding is really good. But you have to keep in mind flex versus fixed funding. Flex funding is offered from places like Indiegogo, where even if you don't meet what you're trying to raise, you still get all the money. Fixed funding is offered from places like Kickstarter. If you don't raise all you're trying to raise, you get none of your money. So you need to clearly understand the difference between fixed and flex funding because, again, uh, that makes a big decision on your part of whether you get all the money or not. Second thing, crowdfunding works if you have backers lined up before you run the contest and if you share the contest and have a network ready to share it the minute that it happens. That's how it goes viral. People want to see why Kickstarter actually, you know, favors some campaigns and brings them to the forefront and shows them to everybody. It's because their algorithms show there's a lot of traffic and a lot of investment quick on that campaign. So if I'm going to start a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter Indiegogo, I'm going to have 10 investors lined up ready to give me money. And then I'm going to have my whole social network ready to share the minute the project goes live. A project goes live on Kickstarter. And then what I do is I go right in my investors. I have them invest. Then I get it to my social network. My social network shares it to their social networks. And then all of a sudden, Kickstarter sees all this traffic. And then they start showing it to more people as a result. And that's how you get these rewards-based crowdfunding campaigns to go viral. So you need help getting money. As again, I've talked about it. For those who are just coming in, feel free to give us a call, 877-600-2487. Or go to creditsuite.com forward slash console. Get a consultation with us. We have you get $250 worth of business credit reports for free. We go over them with you. We give you tips and tactics to help you build business credit. We also try to qualify you for all funding you can get now. And we will do a fundability assessment to see what you need to fix on your fundability that's preventing you from getting money right now. And all of that happens on a consultation. All you have to do is give us a call or schedule at creditsuite.com forward slash console. Don't forget. Get value, hit the like button, hit the love button. I don't have enough of you doing that yet. Please do that and please share this to other people so we can get more entrepreneurs to be able to get this information. So rewards-based crowdfunding, we talked about that as well. Um, everything that's unique, just some things that you need to think about as you're actually going into crowdfunding. And I've got an entire presentation on this on our YouTube channel that teaches you all the sources, how to set up your campaign, what you need to do, youtube.com forward slash credit suite. You can get all the ins and outs to be able to build uh, your crowdfunding campaign. Equity crowdfunding. Remember we talked about two kinds of money, debt where you owe somebody money, you got to pay them back equity where you give away ownership interest in your business. Well, because of some changes that have made it easier in the last number of years for private investors to invest into privately owned businesses, there's now what's called equity crowdfunding. And this is most popular through a, crowd, a place called crowdfunder. Okay, and here it is. You can actually see the actual where it changed. Equity crowdfunding tends to be covered by the Securities Act of 1933 regulation crowdfunding. You can get that, but there's new regulations that's come out that's made it easier for investors to invest into privately owned businesses. And the biggest in this space is called crowdfunder. Crowdfunder basically brings together you, somebody that needs money, with venture capitalists and angel investors. It puts it together and it basically, you're giving up ownership equity in your business. You're selling stocks, easier easier to say in your business. 
in exchange for a return of your money. Crowdfunder brings together a bunch of investors into one place. So it's just simplifying the, the way that you actually get equity investment from angel investors and, 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 and through uh, venture capitalists. Now, don't get me wrong, there are online networks for angel investors and venture capitalists, but this also pulls a lot of them together to make it easier to get money from those sources. Federal grants, number 16, you can get federal grants for a lot of different reasons. HUD offers them for urban areas. Uh, USDA offers them for rural areas. There's so many federal grants available. What I like about grants is it's free money. It doesn't even have to be paid back. And if you want to access all of them, then go to one place. They're all in one place. It's called grants.gov. And grants.gov will give you access to all of those federal grants. Now, it is competitive with some of them and some of them it's not. A lot of people don't even know about some of the grants. Some of them are. You're going to have to actually fill out some paperwork in order to get this done. But great way to go. Free money. It doesn't have to be paid back. And if you're attending our funding challenge uh, next month, we're having a, a funding 30 challenge. We're bringing 20 different financial experts in to talk about all different kinds of funding programs. It ain't going to just be me talking for three hours. You're going to have everybody else talking. I'm just going to be the MC hosting the event, kicking back much easier than talking the whole time. And we're going to have people on there that actually help you do grant writing proposals so you can actually get in and do grants. Uh, I don't have a landing page for the funding challenge yet, but if you tune into my live streams here in the weeks to come, I'm going to give you a landing or a place to go to register for that. And if you are on our list, if you're not, you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash EIN, creditsuite.com forward slash EIN, grab our free guide on building business credit that puts you on our email list and we will email you details of the funding challenge where I'll have somebody there because a lot of you have asked it to actually help you write grant proposals. Speaking of grants, number 15 is local, state, and uh, city and state grants. Don't leave me yet. I still haven't got to one of my favorites. I told you I have like five favorites. I got one of my favorites that's coming up here soon. I can't look forward to that one. Local, state, and city grants. If you want those, you can go to GrantWatch. GrantWatch.com is where you can look at local grants, city grants, community grants, state grants. These are way easier to get the federal grants because they're all in your local area and a lot of great options where this can actually work for you as well. You don't need cash flow. You don't need credit. You don't need collateral uh, to be able to qualify. You just have to be willing to actually fill out the actual grant paperwork. And if you want to do that, there's a good chance uh, that you can actually get approved. John says, is utilization considered in business credit? It's not considered in Equifax or DMB's primary credit scores. It is a small factor in less than 10% of experience uh, commercial credit score. So hopefully that specifically answers your question. Boss says, hey, Ty, can actors apply for business credit? Absolutely, anybody can. As long as you follow my steps, have an entity, have an EIN, you absolutely can apply for business credit. And uh, Toreen says, do we get uh, do we get to work with you or somebody else? Um, on our team, you work with people way smarter than me. <laughs> if you are calling in and you're working with our team, my business advisors are the ones I go to with answers. So for example, I just discovered today that Discover has a great business credit building card, and we just added that to our business finance suite. I learned that from my business advising team. So actually a little, uh, I kind of the face, I'm the one that takes the credit for the information, but I'm not the one that produces a lot of this. So you're actually going to be working with our advisors, which are the ones that give me the information I need to put together these trainings to answer your question. And if you're working with us and you want to know what that looks like, just go online, look at our reviews. Our reviews will tell you the number one thing people freak out about is the servicing they get from our advisors. So you will be working with our team. They will help you through the process. If you're coming in as a partner, Tareen, you'll be working with me. I do our weekly coaching webinars uh, every single week for our partners. I host those. Um, but then we have a whole partner success team that will help you there as well. But again, our team's the one that educates me. They're the one that really gives me the information I'm giving to you. And they are phenomenal. You're going to love them. They're the ones that have directly worked with hundreds and thousands of different investors. One of our advisors worked with over 30,000 clients so far. I mean, it's just crazy how many clients they've helped build business credit. And those will be the, who help you through the business credit building process. Commercial real estate financing. This is where you can get financing to be able to buy or refinance commercial real, real estate. You can get it from commercial real estate financing lenders. You can also get it from SBA. SBA has a great 504 program, which is specifically designed for the purchase of assets, such as equipment, inventory, parking lots, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can use commercial real estate financing for a lot of different reasons and get it from FinTech online lenders and get financing as much as like 80%, 85% financing of whatever you're borrowing. Interest rates can be pretty low as well, depending on your risk. 
and as they really like you to have properties that are paying for themselves. So again, now's a great time to buy commercial real estate, right? A lot of, you're going to be pretty cheap in the years to come. So what's going to happen is if you get in and you get 80% financing, well, then you can even use some of this other finance that we talked about to get your 20% down covered and even make it easy to get in with money to little to no money down. We see a lot of people actually uh, being able to buy the property they're currently leasing and lowering their overall payments. We see that happening a lot. And here's Ella, uh, access to capital and credit has changed our business dramatically because in lean times, we're able to continue with our marketing efforts to pick up extra business. I felt comfortable working with Credit Suite because they partner with the biggest names in the industry like Dun & Bradstreet. Maybe they trust them. I know I can. We've been able to obtain financing to buy the building we're in right now, saving us thousands in rent. Not only that, but we're build, buy, building a business, leveraging other people's money. So obviously I show her for an example. She used commercial real estate financing to buy the building she was in. And she lowered her payments. So this happens a lot. I mean, we had Ida client the other day that lowered their overall payment by $10,000 a month because they bought the building that they were in and we were able to help them get in with no money down. So a, good, a lot of good ideas can come from commercial real estate financing. Buying a business that's cash flowing that pays for itself. Buying the building that you're already in. Refinancing. There's a lot of options that you have there. Okay. Um, so uh, SBA. Let's talk about SBA contract line. This is basically one of their cap lines. It's for anybody that has assignable contracts. You do need good credit. You do need cash flow. You do need collateral to get it. But you can get a credit line for up to $5 million for, again, if you're working with assignable contracts. Now, if you're not, then you can actually come in and be able to get their 7A loan or their working credit line. These are also under SBA's programs of what they call cap lines. And their cap lines is just basically how they describe their, their credit lines. You get it financing for up to 5 million bucks. Um, you could have the maturity of the credit line be up to 10 years, really low interest, but you need to have collateral cash flow and good credit to get it. But a great option to go, you can use these for just kind of like any purpose. Now, if you're in the construction industry, then you want to look at their builder's credit line. Okay, that's specifically for those people in the construction industry. And again, loans up to $5 million, or credit lines up to $5 million. You choose between a loan and credit line, it's your choice. Okay, and you can get very low interest rate with those as well. And then they also have what's called a seasonal credit line. And this is for seasonal businesses. So if you're in a business that has ups and downs based on the season that you're in, you want to look at SBA's seasonal credit line. Okay, this is specifically for seasonal businesses to like pay the expenses that you have in your downtime where you're able to make it back to like the good times. Now, SBA has a 7A program where you're able to get approved for up to $5 million. And even though a lot of us think SBA programs are pretty tough to qualify for, if you get what's called the SBA small loan, which is $350,000 or less, it's fairly easy to get approved for if your credit's not bad. If your credit's pretty good and you've got tax returns that you know, show consistent revenue, and you have some kind of collateral, personal, business, whatever, they'll take whatever they can get, then 7A loans and 7A small loans are pretty good to go, are pretty good. The SBA 7A is available up to $5 million. The SBA small loans are up to $350,000 and way easier to qualify. You can get the small loans done in two, three months, I found. The $5 million or the higher dollar amount SBA loans, if you're an established business, might take you a little bit longer, but you can get really long-term, 30 years, and you get really low interest rate, as low as you know five, six percent, and that helps keep your payments really low. Now I talked about this earlier. SBA 504. This is for the specific purpose of buying a fixed asset. And SBA classifies fixed assets as equipment. Uh, they actually do parking lots, landscaping. They do. They qualify as as well as buildings. So if you need to buy a fixed asset, then you want to use an SBA 504. Again, long terms, low rates helps keep the payments really, really, really low and helps you buy the stuff that you actually need to buy with long-term low rates. So you keep your payments low on stuff even cheaper than, for example, equipment financing maybe. But a lot of you don't know about micro loans. Micro loans, you don't need to have all that cash flow. You don't need the collateral. You don't need really need to have good credit. You can get this as a newer business, even as a startup business. And micro loans are available up to $50,000. They're not offered to banks because banks don't make enough money on them to really offer them. But instead, what they're done, what they've done is they're actually offered through what they call uh, nonprofit community-based organizations, uh, actually, or what they call their intermediaries. I don't know why I can never say intermediaries. I did it for once, I, for the first time. Intermediaries, maybe because I'm looking at it. 
So they're not to do banks, they're often to do these small nonprofits, but even startups can get these kind, this kind of financing. So I wanted to introduce it. If 7A or SBA financing is above your head because you don't have good credit, cash flow, or collateral, then the micro loans uh, could very well work well for you. The average loan amount is about 13 grand, and they'll go up to about $50,000 in total financing. And uh, first on, first stay in focus. Uh, how about funding for startup hotshot transport company? We talked about a lot of options that would work. Too many to go back and go through all of them with you. But business credit would work for you. Fuel credit will work for you. The cash credit would work for you. Uh, even if you're a startup, you're able to get the credit line hybrid program, stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRA, securities-based financing. These micro loans can work. Uh, some of the many different options that we've actually talked about so far can work for you. And here's Kyle and Char. I believe the business finance suite is the best step-by-step pay by number system to secure anywhere from 50 to 150,000 in business credit. There are ports on your business credit port and helps you separate your personal and business credit. What I like most is you have access to actual coaches that will take you by the hand and walk you through the system and answer question, every specific question you have related to your business. It's just an amazing opportunity. Kylan, I love Kylan. He was a gym teacher, wanted to get into business. We came in, we helped him get the money to start the business. He decided to get into the business of offering other people businesses or offering other people business funding and built a heck of a business using some of the finance we've talked about today. So again, just goes to show you, well, first of all, working with us, the kind of results you're able to get, but also by attaining capital, what can actually do to change your life. And again, if we can help you along the way, building your business credit, getting financing, um, or if you want to know about how fundable your business is, give us a call 877-600-247, or you can schedule online with us at creditsuite.com forward slash console. Micro loans are business loans that are relatively small. They're under 50000 They're typically as low as $500 that you're able to get. And these are great for startups, very easy to qualify for. Places like Kiva offer 0% interest rates on these things. And Kiva even pulled together multiple different people or sources. So you go through them and you can get access to a bunch of these different places. The Opportunity Fund also is another way, provides loans to low and moderate income immigrants, women, and other underserved small business owners. Uh, and ASEAN also is a great source of these. So ASEAN and Kiva are some of the best ones to check out for micro loans. Great for startups. You don't need to have really good personal credit, but you need to have a history of paying your bills on time. Because again, they're not looking at anything else to be able to qualify you. And uh, Brian says, can a fix and flip be crowdfunded? So fix and flips can be. And I mentioned this earlier. There's a specific kind of crowdfunding that has to do with only real estate investors. I, I, I don't even remember the, the source for it, but there is one that's out there. There's also something called house reseller program. I don't even think it's an option I'm mentioning here today. So I will get into it and I'll skip it if I go over it. It's specifically for fix and flips. You can get 100% of the money you need to be able to fix and flip the property, 100% of the money to buy and fix the actual property. You need three things to qualify. Average credit, like 620 FICO score, cash in the bank. They're going to want you to put some in escrow and three properties you've already flipped. You've got to show some kind of experience, but that could work for you really well as well because that's specifically for the purpose of fix and flip financing. And Anthony says, will be hard or soft acquiring your personal credit when applying for no PG uh, business credit lines. Well, if you're applying for no personal guarantee uh, credit that we talked about here, there is no inquiry. They never even look at your personal credit. So all the no personal guarantee I've talked about credit I've talked about today, they don't even look at your personal credit. There is no inquiry, hard or soft. And general contractors are not considered to be high risk. Um, are the credit suite consults free for small business? They absolutely are. If you give us a call for the consultation, we never charge you for the consultation. If you look online, you'll see hundreds of reviews just about our consultations because of the value you get there. Uh, and Monique says, does it matter if you use specific funding, financing avenues to purchase real estate investment properties? Well, what matters most is your payment. Fix and flip financing is expensive. SBA 504 is cheap. So you just kind of have to look at the kind of property you're buying and just be, and you got to figure out, are you going to fix and flip it and sell in six months? You're going to hold it long term. That's going to kind of determine uh, what kind of financing you're going to want to get there. Terry says, if, if, if we actually talk, if you have a long business, a business name, Okay, um, I'll come back. If you have a long business name, but your website is abbreviated online. Will that cause an issue? It won't cause an issue, but it doesn't help towards your credibility with lenders and credit issuers either, just so you know. Okay, so number five, term loans. So term loans are offered from a lot of alternative lenders, and they're not SBA loans. They're like a step below SBA loans. So term loans, instead of SBA loans, where you need two to three years worth of tax returns, with term loans, you only need one year of tax returns. And um, that's it. If you show some kind of profit on those tax returns, you can usually get approved. 
The interest rates are pretty low. The loan amounts I've seen into the millions of dollars you're able to get, uh, a lot of them don't look at collateral. A lot of them just want to see good credit, 620, 650 score higher, they'll even accept. And if you have tax returns to show some kind of profit, good chance you can get approved. Alternative SBA loans are kind of similar to term loans where they're offered through all kinds of private investors. The private investors will typically go as long as 10 years versus 30 years. The interest rates are typically anywhere between 6 and 10%. And all you need is tax returns to show some kind of profit, a 620, 650 FICO score. If you have that, there's a good chance you're able to get approved. Okay, house for seller. I just talked about this. So house for seller is where you can actually be able to get money you need to fix and flip properties. 100% of the money you need to be able to buy and actually flip the property itself. You just need some experience flipping some money in the bank at about a 625 FICO score in order to get approved. Okay, and um, then we take a look at uh, bridge loans. Bridge loans are really popular. I think I've, one of my either my number one or my bonuses here is one of my other top five. I haven't got to it yet, and I'm excited to get to it because it's one of the best programs I've seen. Bridge loans bridge the gap between when you need funding. So I'll give you an example of bridge loans. There's a lot of them. We have credit line hybrid. In credit line hybrid, you can get up to $150,000, 0%, no doc financing, even as a startup business. We talked about it with my number 50 option in this training. And sometimes you need to pay down credit cards because your utilization is too high to qualify, right? So if your utilization is too high to qualify, then you can use a bridge loan to actually get a loan to pay down your credit cards. Then you pay down the credit card. Then you get the other loan. Then you use the money from credit line hybrid to pay off the bridge loan. That's an exa perfect example of how bridge loans work. They bridge the gap between you needing longer term financing and what you can get now. There's all kinds of bridge loan financing out there. I just gave you an example for credit line hybrid. There's also bridge loan financing for commercial real estate. There's also bridge loan financing for a lot of other kinds of financing out there that you may get that bridges the gap between what you may get long term and what you can actually get short term. 25,000 to 300,000 interest rates are all on the board, 7 to 24%. Really good for bridging the gap between what you can get now and uh, what you can actually get in the future. And number one, don't get, don't worry, I've got extras on here too. You know, I always have bonuses. So, blanket real estate, I know, like 50 wasn't enough. I had that. So blanket real estate financing is a blanket mortgage is a type of loan financing for more than one property at the same time. Okay, businesses often use this to buy commercial property investments. This can be used for commercial landlords, residential landlords, property loans. Look, I'll tell you what happens to us. We have a lot of people that come in that own a bunch of properties because they're real estate investors. They have a bunch of different separate loans on them. And what they want to do is they want to combine them all to one loan. That is an example of how blanket real estate financing works, whether it be for residential or commercial mortgages. The loans itself, the property itself is collateral, and you're basically getting one loan secured by a bunch of different types of properties. Uh, and that's exactly how this works. 4 to 11% interest, typically uh, 2 to 30-year loan terms. Great way to combine a lot of different mortgage payments into just one and sometimes even take cash out. The bonus number one, because 50 wasn't enough for me. Second and third position revenue lending loans. We talked about cash flow financing and revenue lending. But what a lot of business owners don't know is there's lenders out there that specifically are in the space of offering a second or third position to that loan. So I go to get cash flow financing for 100 grand. There's a lot of lenders out there that will automatically, just because this lender approved me for the 100, give me another 10 or another 20,000 for a second or third position. So if you ever go to get cash flow financing or merchant cash advances, you need to know about these because you can get even more money through a second and or third position of cash flow refinancing or revenue lending financing. Uh, and again, you don't need to have good credit. You don't need to have collateral. All that you need to have is good bank account management and cash flow in order to be able to get approved. Okay, if you have that, there's a good chance you're actually able to get approved. Uh, and there's a lot more to that. Purchase order financing bonus number two. Okay, this is if you have purchase orders that need fulfilled. So let me give you an example. Okay, let's say that you're a t-shirt embroidering company. You get a huge order for t-shirts. You got to buy the t-shirts in order to embroider and sell them to your customers. Well, you don't want to have to pay your money out of pocket to buy all those t-shirts. You use purchase order financing to buy the t-shirts. You embroider them. You sell them to your buyer. Then you pay off the purchase order financing. Very popular and goes very common with AR financing if you have outstanding purchase orders. If you get an order that you need fulfilled and you don't want to spend the money out of your pocket to get it. Cash flow financing, um, I think I've already talked about cash flow financing, and I'm going to skip this because I want to see, but I want to give you another option in this place because I didn't offer it. I'm not going to, I already did cash flow financing, 
So I'm going to skip it, but I'm going to give you something else in this point. It's called a merchant credit line. And the merchant credit line is a program that came around at the end of 2020. It's one of my favorite top five lending programs. It's up there with credit line hybrid. It's up there with kick further. It's up there with Funbox. It's my number four. My fifth it is still to be undetermined. I have one more slot for all you people that want to lend money. If you create a cool program for our tribe, then you will get my number, my number one spot. Okay. So with this program, oh, it's so good. Okay. So it's not based on personal credit or collateral. It's based on cash flow. And you can get up to $100,000 in funding or a max of 100000 of what you process in your in, in, in um, credit card transactions in a month at a cap of hundred. So if I process two hundred thousand a month in credit card transactions, I can get a hundred thousand dollar line of credit. If I process a hundred thousand dollars, I can get a hundred thousand dollar line of credit. If I process twenty five thousand dollars, I can get a twenty five thousand dollar line of credit. You get it. the the cap is a hundred grand. You can't go higher than what you process a month in credit card transactions. It reports to Experian Commercial and has no personal guarantee. No personal guarantee. Not based on personal credit. Does and also at the same time. Reports to experience helps you build business credit, and it's just based on you consistently processing credit card transactions. So if you're doing that, that merchant line of credit is one of the best programs I've seen come out of 2020, along with Kick Further. If you're interested in getting approved, give us a call, 877-600-247, creditsuite.com forward slash consult to get approved. So, wow, we went over like a lot more than 50. And believe it or not, there's a lot more we didn't even cover. There's a lot of programs we're going to cover in our funding challenge next month. So make sure that you keep an eye out. And I'll actually, I, I own the domain. I know exactly where it's going to be. Funding30challenge.com. The website is not up yet, but write it down. Funding30, the number 30, challenge.com. We're going to have the website be live. And at Funding30challenge.com next month, we have, which is going to take place March 16th, Okay, you have to register. It's free to get into the funding challenge, although VIP get backstage access, and it will go live into a specialized Facebook group. The funding challenge brings in over 20 funding sources, talking about over 30 funding programs, and they're going to introduce you to all kinds of funding options that can work for you to grow your business. The challenge is to walk away with three funding options that will work for your business. My hope is that you got way more than three today. Keep an eye out for our funding challenge. So let's talk about how to get all this in one. A lot of people have asked along the way here along the chat, and I haven't answered these questions about what it's like to work with us, what's involved there. I want to go through that with you really quick. So look, an enormous uh, a benefit, uh, a, a buffet of, of choices we talked about today, right? How do you select the right ones? Well, that's exactly what we do here at Credit Suite. Our business finance suite helps you find the best financing, get set up for financing, and get yourself set up to get maximum funding. So you're watching this webinar on your computer, phone, tablet, because you probably want the easiest and fastest way to get money. You're probably already struggled to get the money that you need and get the terms that you want to get. Well, as an entrepreneur, you should be able to get the money you need when you need it, but not knowing all the fundability points. We talked about seven today, eight, there's 125. Not knowing those is a barrier. Not knowing where and how to get funded. We talked about a lot of funding programs. Some we talked about where to go to get them. Sometimes we, some of them we didn't have a chance to go through all of those. Not knowing how to build your business credit all these things, it prohibits you from getting the money you need. And that's exactly what our business finance suite does. It does all three. So our business finance suite, you can get business credit for your EIN that's not linked to your social. You get access to funding, funding advisors and or, or, uh, business credit advisors to help you in building business credit, a funding team that helps you get funding. You can do all this in English and or Spanish. Okay. And our technology basically helps you meet credibility requirements before you even apply. We dive into all these fundability requirements you have, not just the six or seven we covered today. Okay. We set up your business name correctly. We help set up your EIN. We help set up your business address credibly the right way. We help you get set up with 411 at no cost. You don't even have to pay list yourself for it. We pay them. We set up your website. We help you set up your email address the right way. We help you get licensing and set up all of your online listings for compliance. We help you get your bank account, merchant account set up the right way. We help you get set up with Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. And you get 90% discounts on business credit reports. You will literally pay the credit reporting agencies more money in a year than what you'll actually pay with us enrolled just in savings. I mean, we save you enough money on credit monitoring in a year that is basically free to work with us because of all the money we save you from what you don't have to pay for. We help you get your DUNS number for free. We help you get your BIN number from Experian for free. We dispute your inaccuracies with the business credit reporting agencies. So business credit building and repair is all part of what we do here at Credit Suite. 
We give you the largest access to starter vendors to start building initial business credit. We give you largest access to revolving retail credit as well, where you're actually able to come in and be able to get retail credit with Amazon, Walmart. We have the largest supply of that kind of credit as well. We also have the largest supply of cash credit, a fleet credit that you're able to get as well, where you can actually come in and build your business credit, being able to tap in. And I'm going to show you what this looks like, where you can actually know all the sources, know their underwriting guidelines. It's so ridiculous. We have a data team. And what our data team does is they literally communicate with all of these credit providers to be able to come in and tell you exactly what their underwriting guidelines are. Think about that for a minute. Think about applying for a credit card, but then you know exactly what the requirements are for the credit card before you apply, and you know you can get approved before you even apply. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is what our finance suite is. All these sources of building business credit are here, who they report to, what kind of terms they give you, the cost, how fast they actually fund the deal, exactly what it takes to get approved is here. Their underwriting guidelines for every single program that you need is right here. You actually can see it color. It says apply if you qualify. We gray it out if you don't actually qualify for that program. We actually give you tiers here so you can see the different tiers of credit to know what order to apply for what kind of credit. We help you build your fundability, get your business credit reports, all of that. You can even get valuations here. You can even become a partner and get your own back office to be able to offer business credit and financing. So this is what a lot of you've asked about, and this is exactly what we do here at Credit Suite, the largest supply of cash sources without a personal guarantee, without a personal credit check. We have the cash flow financing options we talked about, way more than we even went over today. Asset-based options, the collateral-based options, way more than we even talked about today. We also have unsecured financing, up to 150,000, private money, alternative lenders. It's all available through our funding team and through our business finance suite itself. And with our partner program, if you want to offer business credit financing as a service, we give you like, like it's like a franchise without hefty franchise fees. Like you'll spend 50,000 to millions of dollars for a franchise. We give you that without spending 50,000 to millions of dollars. We give you ebooks, your own websites, seminars, PowerPoint presentations, like the one you've seen today. You're getting ebooks, you're getting videos, everything you need to promote business credit financing, to run your own business credit financing business, to either start one or to be able to add it as an existing income stream to your existing business. You're getting articles, finance videos, everything you need, a jumpstart program, a seven-step program to learn everything you need to know to offer business credit financing and become a funding loan broker if you want to. And you're also getting access, 24-7 access to our funding suite, which I showed you. English and Spanish, business advisors that hand, hold your hand, coach you through the whole process. Help with setting up the name, the entity, the EIN, the address set up, the phone set up, the 411 set up, the website, email address set up, the online compliance set up, your bank account, merchant account set up, set up with all the reporting agencies, the DUN number, the VINs number, the disputing with the credit reporting agencies, the largest supply of vendor accounts, of retail credit, of fleet credit, of cash credit, of all this type of financing, it all comes as part of our finance suite with the full team that actually helps you through the process as well. And if you do get started with us through this week, first of all, I'm going to give you the slides of this actual presentation so you can actually have the slides to go back to for reference. I'm also going to save you 500 bucks, which we don't discount. You'll not see sale emails from us because we don't need a discount. We're the only ones in the world with something like what we have. And you're getting basically a $500 discount, which is a 20% discount. You're also going to get a 30-minute uh, advising call with our business advisors, 90 days of credit monitoring. You'll spend 750 bucks with Experian, Equifax, and Experian for that same credit monitoring you're getting for free if you're enrolling with us this week. DMB, Equifax, and Experian monitoring for only 24 bucks a month after that. 28-page full business valuation report to see what your business is worth and to see what you can do to improve the value of your business. It can cost you two grand. To get a business valuation done, we're throwing that in for free as well. Multiple review sites. You can pull all review sites into one widget on your website. And I also mentioned I'm going to get you the PowerPoint slides from this presentation. If you're enrolling with us through Friday, all of that stuff comes as a bonus. Because, look, we find that our clients that have that get started fastest, that take action the fastest, get the best results. That's why we're doing that. So if you get started, you can see of all the value that I gave you, it's a bunch. It's worth probably over 17 grand. And it's only one payment 
of actually $24.97. We're even going to discount that by 500 bucks for you if you're getting started by Friday. And you can get seven payments of $5.97. If that's too much, we even can work with you and lower the payments as well. So you can get started with our core program, but you also can get started with our VIP partner program. For 100 bucks more, you can become a partner and offer business credit financing as a service. So it's 100 bucks more, you get everything you need to actually make your own business out of offering business credit and financing as well. And you'll realize you don't have to decide between time and money. The reality is it'll take you two to three years to build your business credit and you only get a fraction of the results on your own. And to us, you're getting within six months. And so we're saving you the time, but if you look at all the stuff we're giving you for free or discounted rate, like credit monitoring, 411 setup, done setup, then you'll realize we save you money and we save you time as well. Okay, and as a result of that, to help ensure payments are affordable, we even will customize payment plans for you. If the payments I've shown you are too much, that shouldn't be a barrier. We will work with you on more affordable payments. We even have places that will finance it for you. And we also have off-site programs that are not even on our website where it's ridiculously affordable to work with us. Very cheap, cheaper than you even imagine. And all you have to do is give us a call and we'll talk to you about those options as well. Plus, it's risk-free. You're getting everything when you make even your first payment. If you want to know the kind of results you get, this is Josh. I can tell you, he now surpassed a million bucks because of the SBA loan we got him. And uh, here's what he has to say. One thing that's beautiful about Credit Suite is that you start with baby steps. The first thing we did is get a couple of revolving credit lines and store credit, then we graduated to gas cards. He started, by the way, with revolving credit lines, store credit, gas cards. This is where he started. Then we ended up getting a very nice line of credit at Amazon. Then we worked our way up to a very, very nice SBA loan. Thanks to Credit Suite, we were able to really get our business finance in order for what looks good to potential lenders and potential creditors. And we became very attractive to lenders. The best options are always available to those who have the credit game locked down. And that's what Credit Suite platform allows you to do. We've been able to get smart, make smart investments in staffing, market systems, sales systems, product development, all these things before Credit Suite, we just really couldn't do. I just don't have to stress as much because we get money in the bank to take advantage of opportunities. And I'm not as stressed anymore. I can keep a bank account that has plenty of cushion in there. And that cushion just honestly makes me a better dad. It makes me a better husband because I'm not stressing out. I, I say this to the last, and I like Josh's testimonial because I'm a dad. And, um, and I lost everything in the mortgage crisis because I didn't have access to money. And that's why I started Credit Suite because I wanted a solution where nobody ever had to go through the nightmare process I wanted to go through. And I won't get too far into it because I will literally start crying. I don't want to cry in front of this many people. Okay. But I can tell you that that's how I feel too. Having access to money in the bank, having access to credit lines, having access to revolving credit, it gives me peace of mind. When COVID hit, I didn't freak out. I got plenty of revolving credit to tap into to carry me through. And that peace of mind, as Josh said, it just creates less stress. It makes me a better dad, I found. So I think that really hit home for me because that's exactly how I feel having access to capital. So remember a lot of stuff you get when you roll and roll everything you need to basically build your business credit 24 seven, work with our team and expedite your results. Everything you need to know to get your financing, to be able to get your fundability set up a ton of extra bonuses, including 750 bucks worth of business credit reports for free coaching call for 30 minutes with our team, 28 page valuation report, only 24 bucks a month for credit monitoring after your free 90 days, multiple sites widget and the actual PowerPoint slides as well. And you get full access to everything um, when you make even the first payment. So, and again, if you want to get with us for that free consultation I talked about at the beginning, give us a call, 877-600-247, creditsuite.com forward slash console. We will get your business credit reports for free for 30 days. We will go through those with you, give you tips and tactics to build your business credit. We will help you find out what kind of financing you can get. We'll give you some tips about improving your fundability as well. And I'm now going to ask some questions. A lot of you on the webinar, you might need to re-put your questions in because the webinar cut out because somebody else came in and then it restarted. But I'm going to go back through all my live stream questions here and I'm going to stick around and I'm going to answer just about everything that you may have. Um, so if you have questions, type them in the chat, type them in the chat of the webinar, type them in on LinkedIn, Facebook, Periscope, and I will make sure we get those questions. But look, if you're looking to get the most money for your business, We've positioned Credit Suite to be the source now and ongoing for you. So if you imagine a world where you need a loan and you need a credit line, you don't have to know what's out there. You don't have to know what's available. You don't have to know what to qualify for. You can just pick up the phone, send an email and get an answer and have a team go to work to get you the money. That's exactly what we do at Credit Suite. Okay. And not only do you pay less, not pay more money for the funding you get, you pay less because we negotiate with those lenders. 
We do tens of millions of dollars in funding with these lenders on a regular basis. They give us discounted rates, we give you. So you get more access to funding, better pricing for funding. We go through all this fundability aspects. As a matter of fact, we integrate with the same secret credit bureaus the lenders use. We're the only ones in the world that do that. We went and found the credit bureaus that lenders are getting their data from. We integrated with them. We pull their data into our system. And then we match your data against that data. We tell you what's wrong and help you fix it. So when you go, so ridiculous. So then when you go to apply with the lender, the lender sees all checks because everything they're checking for, we help you realize was wrong and fixed before you apply. So that's why we're able to get our clients so much money is that we understand the funding system. We understand what you got to do to qualify. We fix that stuff before they even know that it's wrong. Then you go apply and we're basically pre-screening the application, serving up the exact application they want to get. It's why our clients get approved typically for more money and better terms and get approved faster. Not to mention that we cut years off the business credit building process because instead of teaching you how it works, we're actually holding your hand, walking you through the process. And when you have questions, we answer them in real time, go through those with you. So that's just kind of what your experience is like. And I, you've seen a lot of people talk about it so far during this training. And if you go online, you'll see hundreds of real results. You'll see reviews. You'll see videos all from people that are saying exactly the same thing. That by working with us, you have somebody indefinitely in your business that when you need money will help you, that will help you build business credit, that will help you get fundability. If you get denied somewhere, we help you understand why, fix it, and be able to get approved. How valuable is that to have somebody like that in your corner? That's exactly what it's like to work at Credit Suite. So if you want to learn more, 877-600-247. Schedule time at creditsuite.com forward slash console. Don't forget about your bonuses through the end of the week. And I'm going to go through here and make sure that everybody everybody's uh, questions are answered. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. I'm not going to even mention you by names because uh, you, you're so many. A lot of people are asking if it's saved. The playback is saved on the platform you watched it on. A lot of you are watching on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. It's saved on all those platforms. And if you follow us at Credit Suite, creditsuite.com, top right of our page, follow our Facebook because we're, we're streaming right now to all different kinds of Facebook pages, all different kinds of Facebook groups. We're everywhere right now. You, you might leave comment and, and want to know why I can't see it because we stream to so many places. I can't pull all those places into StreamYard. But if you're commenting on our channels, Credit Suite's Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Credit Suite, I don't know if that's right, youtube.com forward slash Credit Suite, my LinkedIn page, then you can actually come in and, and, and exchange and, and interact with us as well. So, and the playback will be available at all those sources as well. Um, just so you know, a lot of the questions about that. When will, when will you first have to input an NAICS code? Um, yes, your bank, your bank account. That's good. Secretary of state in some states as well. Uh, that's when, and, and keep in mind, and Magnolia, that's a great question because it's not like you have to enter a code. When I go to set up a bank account, I'm kicked back talking to Robin, my banker, and Robin's like, hey, w- what's this business going to do? That's about how she words it. So what she's really asking is what industry am I in? So when you set up your bank account or your secretary of states, when your first any ICS first starts to, to really come in and be asked for. Um, and what do you, what will we first input as an NAICS code? Magnolia, you need to go to any ICS code or any ICS.com, find the one that works best for you. Whenever you enter an any ICS code, enter the code and the actual description. So if it's like, 54329 software publishers. That's exactly what you would want to put in that space as well. Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, starting at ground zero, what credit card? Uh, Valerie, uh, let me know if you still have that question. Hopefully I answered that question uh, throughout that. Do you have a book to what, to what you're saying? So if you ask me that question again, Valerie, I can make sure that your question is answered. Vanessa, uh, please watch his previous videos. He has a, okay, Van- uh, uh, Vanessa is actually answering uh, Valerie on that as well. Eris, we talked about that. Okay, we're doing the replay. We talked about how to get the replays. Uh, once you have all credit, you have major credit cards with no personal guarantee. Yes. Once you build business credit, the final tier is Visa card or MasterCard. What I call cash credit, you're able to get without a personal guarantee, without a credit check. I have a vehicle on my company, and we talked about that one during the presentation. Can you post those smaller accounts we need to apply for? There's a lot of them out there. And if you go uh, to our YouTube channel, you'll find a webinar I did called on seven vendors you can use to build business credit. You can check that out as well. You can also grab our guide at creditsuite.com forward slash EIN. That's creditsuite.com forward slash EIN. You've got a, a bunch of vendors there. I mentioned a bunch of them. Strategic Network Solutions, Granger, Uline, Quill, Crown Office Supplies, Suma Office Supplies, 
amongst many others. So those are some ones to definitely get you started. Uh, the office in Minnesota is cur- I bought, bought the creator. I don't know what that is. The Lift Minnesota. I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, Crown office supplies, Sumo office supplies. Talk about that. Just going through and ended up making sure all the questions were answered. Okay. Good job. Fun bucks out of that as well. Quite that question was answered. Okay. Is real estate. Okay. I think I answered a lot of your questions here on the live stream. I'm getting ready to go to the webinar. Once you get started with getting our business credit organized and established, can you help us get PPP loan? And business credit cards, yeah, we can help you get PPP loan. I've got a PPP loan source. You don't need to do any of this stuff. If you need a PPP source, get us a call, 877-600-2487, info at creditsuite.com. We'll, we'll send your application to our PPP source. They're helping a lot of people get PPP loans. We can help you with that as well. What lending methods would you suggest for funding for making movies? And I get a lot of questions on that. We used to have a specialized funding option just for movie makers, but we got rid of that because we didn't have enough interest in it. Um, I would think you'd want to start with credit line hybrid. That's the lowest cost, 0% interest rates for uh, up to 18 months. That's probably one of the best funding options you're going to be able to use until you actually start getting cash flow established. What lending methods would you suggest for funding? Oh, wait, I just think that. And I'll show up my secrets, uh, Secretary of State to input the code. Your Secretary of State, sometimes they don't ask for that code. I'm not thinking all kinds of weird things here. Uh, the Secretary of State, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But they're going to ask for it with the IRS when you file your taxes. They're going to ask for it on loan applications and credit applications. They're going to ask for it from your bank. But usually your Secretary of State won't ask for it. Sometimes they will. That really depends. Okay. And looking to leverage a brokerage account. You can not a brokerage account. I don't know of anybody that will fund that. I don't, I've, I've asked. And I've never found anybody that will. Stocks, bonds, 401ks, and IRAs you can leverage. But the actual broker account itself, you typically can't. And the reason I find that you can is because you can pull the money out of that account. It's like cash. You can't use cash as collateral because you can go spend the cash. That's the problem I found with using a brokerage account as collateral. That's what I found. I've never found anybody to do it. But Mark, if you find somebody that does, let me know. I've looked and I've never found anybody that would do that. Though. Um, what is the best way to get funding to purchase an, an adult residential facility? SBA loan. So if you want to buy a business, you need to get an SBA loan. SBA could you know, guarantee as much as 85% of the loan. And then what you're going to want to do is use one of these other funding options we talked about to be able to get cover the down payment you need. So a lot of the people I help buy businesses, they get an SBA loan on the business they're buying. Then they use some of the kind of assets in the business, the inventory, collateral, account receivables, stuff like that as collateral to get money to cover the down payment for the SBA loan. And that uh, combined with sometimes seller financing is the best way to be able to buy a business. PowerPoint available. The PowerPoint is available if you're a partner of Credit Suite. And if you are getting started with us or working with us this week, the PowerPoint is available. The playback will be available if you attended to the end of the webinar. Trucking is not a considered to be high risk. Will be hard or soft acquire. We already answered that question. Uh, I already answered that question. Okay, answer that question. Does it matter if you use specific funding financing avenues to purchase real estate investment properties? It doesn't. Not, not for that matter. You can use, I, I recommend any way possible to actually get the property. Then I recommend building business credit and using your Home Depot, Lowe's business credit cards to do the repairs on that property. That's what a lot of our clients do. If you have a long business, oh, we already talked about that too. Our e-commerce and affiliate marketing centers high risk. They're not with most lenders and credit issuers. Keep in mind, every lender is different, but these are not considered high risk, Robert, for most lenders. Uh, James, there is no place to play uh, to click here, like a share on Zoom. But I can figure out, no, you're not. James, you're on a webinar. When I say to like and subscribe and share, it's because I'm running a webinar and I'm running a live stream to like a lot of people right now, which by the way, on the live stream, if you got value, hit the like, love, button, share button. James can't do it. Do it for James because James can't do it on the webinar. Okay. Um, will I be able to write off your training and the taxes? Absolutely. You can write off what we sell on your taxes. And if you need help with that, our team can help you with you and your accountant. Uh, we already answered that question. What if most, what if you have most of this? Is there a set package? Yeah, Sharissa, there is. If you've done a lot of the work already, we have an even cheaper package for you to build business credit with us. Give us a call. We'll talk through that with you. But we've got a special program. We don't even put on our website for those scenarios. Um, and well, wow, where do we pay? Vila is my new favorite. I love it. Vila's like, where do I get started? Look, I think so too. I think that what we offer for the value that we offer it for is mind blowing, honestly, because the valuations, the duns, the credit monitoring, if you bought all this stuff and tried to do this on your own, you're going to spend more money than working with us. It's cheaper to work with us and do it on your own, not to mention that you have a whole funding advising team. You have a business credit team that helps you. So I'm glad that you saw that as well. Uh, and does it come with the CPA? It doesn't come with the CPA, but we can't help you in some of those areas. We're not accountants.
but we can help guide you to some people, people that can help you with that as well. And Ricky says, would this work for purchasing semi-trucks? Yes, equipment financing will work for purchasing uh, trucks. There's also commercial vehicle financing you can get for purchasing trucks. There's also business credit you could build and use that would help you with that as well. Lisra says, can these processes help with a small language tutoring yep. translation business? Absolutely, yep. How about with the startup cost? Yep, computer equipment ads. So you could use business credit to get your computers, to get your office supplies, to get everything you need. Ads, you'd want a Visa card, MasterCard, credit line hybrid, some kind of other financing we can help you get with that as well. Uh, is there a monthly payment after the initial fees paid? No, you have a choice. When you work with us, you can pay one payment, like 29.97 or our normal enrollment, right? You can pay one payment of 29.97, or you can break it down into payments. Once you've paid that, you're done. You don't owe us anything else. Now, that being said, if you're a partner, then you, as a partner, we give you everything you need. You buy our partner program and everything you need to be able to offer business credit financing as a service, free reports, guides, email content, social media content, webinars, PowerPoint presentations, videos, webs, I mean, a whole business in a box. Then every enrollment you sell, you'll pay 500 to 700 bucks, depending on how much volume you're actually buying. So that's how that actually works for our partner program. So you sell it for 3000 like we do. Some of our clients sell our program for five grand. And then you're paying a wholesale rate of five or 700 bucks as a partner. So you could figure out the margin there. You spend 500 bucks, you sell it for three grand, you're profiting $2,500. And keep in mind, you could sell for 2,500 bucks, underprice us even, and you're, you're selling the core program that we sell is the same one that our partners sell. So you're actually able to make really good margins on that. To start my company, uh, once you transfer to agent logistics, I am at the point where I need funding, but I also want to start building business credit. So when I start, where do I begin? Give us a call. We'll do a free consultation, talk to you about what you need, but we can help you with both. We can help you with funding and we can help you building your business credit. If you, uh, so just give us a call, let us see where you are. And then we'll go over it with you and give you tips and tactics on what you need to take next steps to get the funding you need and to start getting your business credit built. Hello, I bought a box truck for 40 grand. I paid 25 grand down to finance the other 15. Just got off my first load with Amazon. Should I pay the truck off to have collateral or pay the 15 grand off to, to build business credit? It's my name. I wouldn't pay the truck off if the credit the truck's reporting and giving you good credit. If you're building credit with a truck, I wouldn't pay it off. I would, I would be able to use the money for growth in your business. I wouldn't use the payoff truck. That's just my own personal advice, right? Dave Ramsey wouldn't agree with me. Dave's a no debt kind of guy. I'm a credit dude. And, it, and you, you can't have credit with no debt. You have to have stuff you're paying to be able to build credit history. And that credit history is what helps you get all other kind of money a better term. So that would be my advice. Ty, I'm already enrolled as one of your VIP partners. Can I recover and continue my fundability process? Yeah, absolutely. Just give us a call. Um, if you have access to your business finance suite right now, uh, this is my little puppy. She's she climbing up here because she's like, you haven't pet me in three hours. I'm being tied up. Let me stop here. Then yeah, we can help you get restarted if you want to do so is what it sounds like. We can help you get that going. Just reach out to your advising team or reach out to our partner team. Can this help with startup costs? Computer equipment, ads, lighting. Yeah, absolutely. If you think about it, a lot of the stuff you need to buy for a startup, computer equipment, uh, you know, lighting, office supplies, you can use business credit cards for all that stuff. Our clients are getting those kind of credit cards in approximately 60 days. So 60 days after starting, no cash flow, no credit, no collateral requirements, our clients are able to get credit cards at Amazon and at, you know, all these retailers where they're then able to best buy, where they're then able to get the actual financing and the credit they may actually need to get going. Okay, so a lot of startups use this to set up their business the right way and be able to access the apps, the, the actual money they need. Okay, and can it help us stall tutoring and translation business? We talked about that. Yes, it can. How do franchises work or how much they have? We don't have a franchise. I was just saying that what we offer to help you offer business credit financing as a service is like a franchise, but without the franchise fee. And it's a bit, you can look at creditsuite.com forward slash uh, creditsuite.com, and if you go to our pricing page, it will give you our partner program. And I went over that with you as well. Uh, I gotta scroll back a lot here so I can give you those options so you can see our partner program. And you can see here it is this is our partner program, okay? So it's one payment of this for our VIP program, or you can get started with eight payments of 697. So that's what it is to get started with everything. So it's kind of like a franchise, but without paying the hefty franchise fee. Uh, what funding sources do I use for CBD retail stores? I gave you a bunch of them. Whether you're selling CBD or not, a lot of the funding I gave you today actually works for that. Actually, I just turned off my PowerPoint. Give me a second here because I am running 
my computer is freaking out because I got so many things going at the same time. Okay, so from current slide. Okay, so there we go. And this is what happens when you are live and doing all kinds of stuff. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so yeah, you can use a lot of these for the, C for the CBD industry. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, a lot of them work. And Mark says, love all you, Ty. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I, I love that you're always tuning in. That Mark, it means a lot to me. Uh, now Hot Mess Express. I love you, Hot Mess Express. That's funny. And I appreciate you making me laugh. Uh, what if we have two companies and want to sign up? That, that's, you can run both companies through there. Look, I would never advise paying us twice for two companies. You can follow our steps and do the same steps for multiple of your businesses. As a matter of fact, once you follow our system, you can create endless amount of businesses and follow the same system to build up those businesses. Justin says, do you know how to get money off of a credit card for free? Let me teach you how people do it, Justin. There's a lot of people that take the cash out of credit cards, but here's how it's done. All the companies that do that, they have somebody that has a merchant account, somebody's ability to process credit cards. And what they do is they have that company process that credit card for $5,000. They charge a small fee and they give you the $5,000 in cash. That is how it's done. So you have to find somebody with a merchant account that's willing to run however much you want to pull out in cash as a transaction. Okay, then and it's got to be somebody you really trust. So there's no chargeback risk or anything like that. And then what happens is then they can just give you the cash and charge you some kind of fee. That is how most companies that do that um, do it. And, and Mark says it's in a securities account. But Mark, if, if it is a securities account, like if it's stocks, bonds, 401ks, or IRA, you can use that as leverage to be able to get the money that you need. Uh, and again, 90%, you can borrow as much as the stocks and the bonds. And Magnolia says, okay, got it. Florida didn't ask. Yeah, Florida said Secretary of State does not ask for that. You are correct. Okay, so that they don't ask for your, your NAICS code there. Okay, let me go to the webinar. I've got a bunch of questions in the webinar. I got kicked out. You didn't get kicked out, Nancy. I, I was my fault. Somebody, what happened was I had a webinar at 3 o'clock. It was supposed to start. I forgot they were using my same Zoom link. So they went to start that, and it shut down the webinar. Then I had to restart the webinar and slack my team and tell my team not to actually use Zoom for the weekly webinar because I, uh, and my team responded. I had a simple Slack message that we did in real time. What about education funding? That could work too for all the things that we talked about today. Did I, uh, I don't think we that. Hopefully you can see my questions before. Yeah, I did and I did. Well, I didn't, I didn't see your questions before, Terry. Please put your questions in now. I can see your questions, but I can't see until I get out of this and go back into Zoom to see those. Uh, so sound went off again. Uh, yeah, everybody's muted. And so Keisha's saying, please unmute us. You can imagine what would happen if I unmuted over a thousand people. It would not be good. That's why everybody is muted. And you can ask your questions in here. I'll get them quite, I'll get them answered. Now I have a business credit card through check. Okay, we talked about that one. Okay. Don't have those buttons. Okay. Is general contractors considered risky company? No, the question is not. Okay. Do you know of any, okay. We talked about that question as well. Akisha from Atlanta, what are all the services your credit suite help with? We did talk about that as well. Can a fix and flip be crown, uh, crown funding? We talked about that as well. Okay, the company again for micro loans is Kiva, K I V A. Kiva is the company to find micro loans. SBA offers them as well through their intermediaries. Okay, and uh, Altal Vis says so basically, you have to wait till you have an EIN before applying for any type of funding for your business. Well, yeah, because you don't have a business without your EIN. So if you're going to want to get money for business, you have to have an EIN because that's what actually establishes you as a legitimate, credible business in the IRS's eyes. And Michelle, but it's free to get from IRS.gov once you get your entity. Michelle says, after consulting with you and decide to use your service, can I write off on taxes? Yes, you can. We talked about that. Um, we talked about, I answered that question. Do we, yes, uh, you can get that savings on the partnership. Yes, you can get in touch with us. Give us a call and our team will give you that information. We'll go over that with you. As a matter of fact, Oh, no, actually, is this the right one? Yeah, that's the one. I, that's the slide, actually. My, my my screen is so I don't know what's going on here. Hold on a second. I can uh, right now. I think it's because I have too many. Uh, okay, good. Okay, okay. uh, let me see. All right, I'm trying to get to your questions, but right now my thing is messing up. There we go. I think it's because it doesn't like Zoom. Does not like its questions overlaying my uh, stream yard. But okay, here we go. Okay, great presentation information. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. We receive a link via email to the webinar playback. Yes, if you stay to the end, you should, you'll get that tomorrow. Uh, do you allow payment plans? We talked about that. Yes, we do. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. Is this a one-time payment become partner? Do be after that? We talked about that as well. Uh, I follow you on YouTube also and looked at a lot of your videos. I'm excited about doing the consultation. I'm really glad that you're able to join us in my consultation. 
Okay. And uh, when you look at it, get started. It is the best thing you want to do is give us a call in case this doesn't make it to our team, but I'll take a picture and get that to our team. So Audrey, give us a call. Go, where am I here? Where is it? Where is it? Where am I here? Oh, okay. Give us a call and then we can uh, definitely help you get started. And I did take a, a picture of your phone, but just in case I forget to send it to our team, which is very common that that can happen. Okay. Thank you from Cartina Cummins out of St. Louis. Thanks for tuning in, St. Louis. Awesome webinar, Ty. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, does this come with the CPA? It doesn't. We don't actually offer accounting support as part of our enrollment program, but we can refer you to one. How important is your office location when it comes to obtaining a loan, residential versus commercial? Well, it definitely matters. It, it gives you a lot of credibility if it looks like you're in a retail location versus a home office. So it's definitely going to make a big impact, especially when you're going for higher dollar mortgages like you are. What's the split for business partners? 50-50 on funding. Yeah, we offer 50-50 on a lot of our programs. Uh, we pay you on funding that your clients secure there as well. Okay, we have an actual guide that shows you what program gets paid what, but it's that it's that pretty it's pretty equivalent on a lot of it. And keep in mind, we don't charge any money for funding, but a lot of time the referral source source will pay us an affiliate fee. And as a partner, you can tap into that as part of our executive program. Thank you. I'm watching via Zoom. I will check the other spots definitely. Thank you. I'm already with Credit Suite. Growing building business credit, have an opportunity to come up to buy an existing company with lucrative accounts. I need funding for around 700000 I pray for your help. You need to get in touch with us because you know you got to look at owner financing. You got to look at SBA financing primarily for your purchase. And then, Daryl, then we want to look at what other kind of money we can get you for the difference between what SBA wants as a down payment and what you might, what you, what you don't have. So we can get you, we can help you with that. Just give us a call. Can these processes help? Well, yeah, we're ready to answer that tutoring business. A lot of people are getting into tutoring business. But by the way, I, I'm actually looking actively now to acquire companies in the education space. So I love that you're in the tutoring and translation business because I'm actually buying, I buy businesses in the education spaces and then help them scale up. So if, in, if you're even in the education space, you want to sell, get in touch with me. Or if you uh, know other people that are. Okay. Uh, um, hello, I bought, okay, we bought, talked about the box truck, started by company, talked about that as well. Did you mention the sole proprietor? You want to be a corporate. So sole proprietors are audited one in seven times to the IRS versus uh, versus corporations, which are one in 50. Just so you know. After consulting with you, I decided to use your service. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. How long will it take from the starting scratch to get loans for marketing for our retail business? Okay. So we, we loans are, as we talked about today, loans and credit lines are based on cash flow, credit, or collateral. You're going to have to have one of those to get loans or credit lines. When you get started with us, you can get to a Visa or MasterCard at the end of business credit building in about six to eight months. But to get loans, credit lines, you might be able to get those now. You just have to have cash flow, credit, or collateral, one of those things we talked about today, to be able to get that. And um, I'm already enrolled as a VIP partner. Can I recover? Uh, can I? Yeah, we already talked about that as well. Can these help us start across these processes? We talked about these as well. A lot of the same questions. I just never got to your questions, which is why a lot of people are asking them again, it looks like. How long? And then let me go back to, to uh, YouTube, Facebook. Okay, best way to get micro, what do you, micro loan is Kiva. What do you think about five-star processing Blitz card? Um, I've, I've heard that that's a pretty good card, but I don't know. I, I rely on my data team. They're the ones that actually uh, look at all those, but I haven't heard anything bad about that card as of now. What's the local grant website again? Uh, the local state grant website is Grant Grant Watch. Grant Watch is where you go for local grants. Mark says, I'm in the partner program and just got control of securities account fully. And now it's time to use collateral. Yeah, baby. I love it. Get a low interest rate credit line, Mark. I won't afford that. What about a barber school? Barber school, man. I tell you what, we have, we have some people that make insane amounts of money with like hair braids and everything to do in the hair, in the hair industry. So good job for you. What about a barber school? Yeah, absolutely. You could start a barber school using any number of different funding options we talked about today. Remember, the smartest entrepreneurs I find combine multiple different ways to be able to fund what they're doing. So hopefully that provides you some value there. Um, okay, and CurtisSuite.com, yes, CurtisSuite.com forward slash E-I-N, E-I-N is where you get our free business credit building guide. Okay, these processes, we talked about that. Da, da, da. Click on Q&A tab, I don't think. Okay, look at the chat. Now I'm looking at Q&A and chat, guys. I can just only get to one stream at a time of questions. How can you use business credit to purchase real estate? Well, the best way to do it is that you get cash credit cards like Visa MasterCards, you take the cash out of them, you use the cash for real estate purchase, then you use uh, business credit cards like Lowe's, Home Depot, for the actual repair and maintenance of those properties. That's how a lot of real estate investors are one of our top three industries we service. That's how most of our investors are doing it. Playback available. Yes, you stayed in the end. You will get a playback. We'll email it to you tomorrow. 
Can we get a credit line to pay for your program? You can give us a call. We'll help you be able to do that. So basically you have to wait. We talked about that as well. How about bodyguard security? Absolutely. It doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. Any kind of business can build business credit. And unless you're in a high risk industry, that's the only thing that would restrict you from getting most kinds of loans and credit lines. Well, you suggest using business credit or doing wholesaling to get started in real estate investing. Uh, real estate investing, man, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if 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 it were me and I was going to get started, I don't know. I can't answer the question. There's so many questions I have. Are you planning on doing fix and flips? Are you planning on holding the properties? There's so many options you have. Contacting seller, doing seller holdback, seller carryback mortgages. The best strategy I've seen our clients use is they use a program like Credit Line Hybrid. They come in and buy their first or two, first or one or two properties. Then they come in and they get business credit, Lowe's Home Depot. They fix up those properties. They sell. Them. They make money. They get credit line hybrid again because now that credit line's freed up. They use the profits. They buy a third or fourth property. They use Home Depot, Lowe's, credit cards, and business credit to flip those. Once they've done three, then they go to house for seller program, which is the fix and flip financing we talked about. Then they're, they're good. They just use fix and flip financing for the rest of the properties that they fix and flip. That's what a lot of our real estate investors do. That's how they use combined funding to go from starting in real estate investing all the way to having all of their properties actually financed in the future. Would you suggest using, okay, and what about, does paying monthly for our credit get reported? Yes, we do. We report to Credit Safe. We're working on Equifax right now. It's hard for us. Look, the credit bureaus don't like people that manipulate credit. I don't mean manipulate in a bad way. You should probably think of another word. But we help people educate you through the process of building your business credit. So they get really worried about people that are helping people build credit, have the ability to report credit to them. So they're pretty scared about that. But we report to Credit Safe and we're working on Equifax right now. Did you say that you do credit repair? We don't do personal credit repair. No, we don't do anything with consumer credit. We only work with commercial credit, but we do do commercial credit improvement. We do help fix inaccuracies on commercial credit. Um, uh, Ty, I just left a message in that year. You'd say, by the way, a lot of you are calling right now because I have well over a thousand people. I don't even know until this all ends how many people are here that are watching this. So you got to understand our phone lines are going to be crazy this week. So if, our, if we don't answer, leave a voicemail. We will call back. We always call back within an hour. As a matter of fact, a lot of times we'll call you back. Well, I don't even want to say that because I don't want to set that expectation. But just leave us a voicemail. We will call you back. I would like to become a partner. What is the tie for a trick girl? They'll typically get a call back within an hour. Just when I do something like this with so many people, I've never done anything like this. Never done a three hour training before where we've got so many people registered and attending. And so our phone lines are just going to be busy and they're going to be that way all week. But leave a voicemail. And I promise you, we will call back because we monitor that. And almost always it's within an hour, just so you know. Can I get a credit line to pay? We talked about that. Uh, send me um, uh, sales tie coupon for discount on my site. I'll get people a four nine. Okay. Um, get in touch with us, info at creditsuite.com. And then uh, we'll talk to you about that. And that could be something you can promote on your site. I like that idea. I'm excited to get started, Jazz. I'm sorry to do your skinny story too. Have you heard about buying a company to obtain the hit their history? You don't want to do that. That's called buying a shelf corporation. The problem with buying a shelf corporation is that when you do that, and there's an ownership change, you bought it from somebody, the credit bureaus re-age the credit report and they update the family tree and everybody that monitors that report gets an alert. So you might think you're buying a credit a history, a company with credit, you're not. You're not buying a company with history. The minute ownership changes, they re-age it and basically count it as a brand new company. So it doesn't help you to buy shelf corporations. It's just an absolute waste of money. Do you have to have a website to get a DUNS number? You don't. But I do think they ask for your website, and I'd recommend you do so before you apply. How does the payments we pay for your services go to the business credit? We talked about that as well. Um, okay, a secure virtual office through Regis. Is that a sufficient address? Yeah, that is. Regis is good. Alliance is good. Da Vinci, they're all good. Uh, Enter coupon code. Uh, uh, Chris, you're going to have to email us this information because I'm not able to be able to do that uh, in the chat. Give me some advice on growing my trucking company. I want to purchase a truck. Uh, this is not. Uh, the, the, a comment in chat is definitely not the place for me to give you advice on, on being able to grow your trucking business. If you're a partner of ours, I do a private training only for partners. I've done it for eight years and all my eight years of training are there. And I teach you everything about running a business. If you want to run a business, follow our podcast, creditsuite.com. Go to the top of our page, the business credit financing show. I bring in experts from every type of industry you can imagine that teach all kinds of things that can help you about growing a business. Those are my two areas where I switch from the money guy 
to actually teaching you how we built a, a $10 million plus business and how we help a lot of other businesses do the same. Um, what next accounts do you suggest? DJ, I didn't see your first one about what accounts that you have now. So I can't answer that question. So put all that into one. How does the payments we pay? Okay, we talked about that as well. All right. So I am um, going to go back up and I'm, I'm going to go do one final round of questions here. And then I'm going to wrap up. Okay. Uh, what about credit repair business? We Credit repair businesses are high risk because they're in financial services like us. There's still a lot of money you can get. As a matter of fact, I feel pretty confident that we funded more credit repair businesses than anybody else out there. And the reason for that is, is because we have a lot of credit repair clients as our partners. They're our partners. They offer business credit financing through us. And so we've gotten them financing. And in getting them funding, we've built relationships with our lenders where they fund that industry. Uh, this could be my dog freaking out because somebody's at the door for three hours. So we're all going to have to kind of probably work through that. Okay. Um, I completed a half a percent of fix and flip so far for reasonable price capital. Okay. That's awesome. Fix and flip. I've only been a business owner for eight months, so I'm still building, but don't know how to build business credit. Again, um, this training gives you some overview. We've got a lot of training on youtube.com forward slash credit suite. If you want the faster path, give us a call. We can talk to you about working with us. And also don't forget, you're entitled to free business credit reports and a free business credit consultation just by giving us a call at 877-600-247. We don't help with grants. That is not something we help with. But in our funding challenge, funding30challenge.com, funding30challenge.com, there's nothing there right now. The website should be up in a week. And then our funding challenge next next month, March 4th, 5th, March 16th, which is free. Okay, everybody says we should charge for our challenge. We're not charging. So I'm going to bring a grant writer in that's going to teach you that will that you, I will put you in contact with and we'll teach you everything you need to know uh, to go out there and get grants. So I, we don't do that, but I will get you access to somebody that does. Okay. What about payment processing? We don't do that, but we have sources that do. And we help you with that. Yes. Do we have access to all this video? Yes, you do. You will get a playback uh, because you attended to the end. And uh, what net accounts do you suggest for my credit card business? We talked about a lot of them so far. I've talked about more than I can even mention here so far with Quill, with Granger, with Uline, with Strategic Network, some marketing solutions, et cetera. Um, and CBD oil retail stores, high risk. Yeah, the, anything to do with uh, with CBD and um, and with anything to do with pot industry. I know CBD is separate, but pot industry and CBD are still seen as high risk right now. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up, everybody. I'm not going to take in any more questions just because uh, I, I'm, I need a drink, not not alcohol. I'm just going to drink water. I haven't drank water in three hours. My body and my voice is a little done too. So we did it in three hours. I thought we could. And if you'd like to learn more about working with us, give us a call. If you like your free business credit consultation, give us a call on the consultation. We'll get your business credit reports with the reporting agencies for free. We will go give you tips and tactics to build your business credit. We will do a fundability assessment to see that your fund to see what's up with your fundability, what you need to fix, give you advice there. We will qualify you for all legitimate funding on that call as well. Don't forget some powerful bonuses if you're enrolling with us by the end of this week, including $750 worth of credit monitoring you got from the credit bureaus we're giving you for free, as well as a business valuation and amongst many other things. If you want to work with us, we make it stupid affordable. I don't like the word stupid, stinking affordable, crazy affordable. You just have to give us a call. Let us know. We will work with you within your budget. We will work out customized payment plans. You'll work with our business advisors, our software to build business credit, our business funding team to help you through all aspects of being getting funding now and indefinitely. So when you need help in the future, getting funding, acquiring businesses, getting more money for expansion, getting money for growth, getting SBA loans, think about that. PPP started. Everybody freaked out. Nobody could get money. Our clients went right to the same source that we went through. And our source got us funded. We sent the documents in Sunday night and we were funded Wednesday morning. That's what happens when you have funding people in your corner that that's what we do is that when you need money, we're here to help you get the money. We're here to help you with the business credit building. We're here to expedite it, the results and get you substantially more money at better terms, better results. It all happens with working with us and you can get your free consultation by giving us a call 877-600-247. That's 877-600-2487. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you attended on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook, you can access this entire Kaya recording of on the channel that you came in on. If you attended on the webinar, then you will be able to get a recording. You will get an email to you tomorrow. And don't forget, I will make sure that you get the PowerPoint slides as part of your enrollment as a bonus if you're enrolling with us this week as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Whew, I need some water.
And I don't have to take the restroom. I fought in three hours. I'd have to, but I think I'm good there. I don't even know why I'm ending with that detail. Excuse me, but I want to give you a drink of water. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you have a great day. Get in touch with us for your free consultation so we can talk more about the kind of money you can get for your business right now. 877-600-2487. Thanks. Have a great day.